to order. Welcome everyone to the Committee of Adjustment meeting of September 11, 2018. My name is Ron Chatta, Committee Chair for today's meeting. This meeting is, this is a meeting of Committee of Adjustment. The Committee of Adjustment is composed of five citizen members who are appointed by Brampton City Council. The committee is authorized by the Ontario Planning Act to consider applications for minor variants from the provision of City of Brampton zoning bylaw. The committee also consider applications for consent, sometime referred to as land division applications, which include severing a new lot from an existing lot, a lot addition, easement, mortgages, or lease in excess of 21 years. My first request to ask those present to ensure that all cell phone and other, other electronic devices are turned off or placed on a non-audible mode during the meeting. <coughs> I would like to introduce the committee members. To my immediate right, Mr. Richard Nurse. To my immediate left, Ms. Desiree Doffler. To my far left, Mr. Robert Crouch. And my name is Ron Chatta, committee chair for today's meeting. Seated at the table on the right side of the Committee of Adjustment, Ms. Jeannie Myers, Secretary Treasurer of the Committee of Adjustment. And seated near the podium, we have city staff members who will assist the committee today. Now I'll ask staff members to please make their introductions. Good morning. My name is Bernie Steiger, Manager of Development Services. I'm Shelby Swinfield, Development Planner. Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Corazola. I'm the Manager of Zoning and Sign Bylaw Services. My name is Ying Xiao, Development Planner. Good morning. My name is Bindu Shah, Development Planner. And Dana Jenkins, Development Planner. Thank you. <coughs> Before we consider today's application, the committee has some procedural uh, matters to take care of. The first is uh, adoptions of minutes. Uh, the meeting, uh, the meeting held on 21st, uh, August 21st, and 2018. Uh, the minutes uh, are being presented. Committee members, is there any question or concern regarding these minutes? So can we have a motion to motion to approve, approve by Mr. Nurse, seconded by Mr. Crouch. All in favor? That's approved. The next item is declaration of interest. Does any member have any declaration of pecuniary interest to declare on any matter being discussed today? Queen Street West. Mm -hmm. uh, preliminary contract discussions were entered into prior to coming to committee of adjustment. Okay. And uh, at the same time, I have a uh, previous working relationship with 18, uh, A18-139, uh, 1453 Queen Street West, uh, Brampton as well. So now we move on to withdrawals and deferrals. For this meeting, we have uh, written requests for deferral. 9920 Airport Road, Brampton, file number B18021 and B18022. So is there any agent or applicant or owner for this application available? Sir, please come at the podium. Would you like to add something? Uh, no, I just wanted to uh, apologize to the committee that we have not done our in full due diligence, and so we we're asking for a deferral at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Committee members, any questions or concern for application B18021 or B18022? Okay. Uh, is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak on these two applications? Please come forward. 
in regards to these applications, right? Um, On Airport Road. Anybody else in the audience wishes to speak on these two applications being discussed? I just want to clear. Could you please answer if not on this application? No, no this problem. Application, staff, could you please win your comments? What are your thoughts on this? Um, staff would be in support of the requested deferral. So is this going to be an indefinite deferral or are we putting a timeline on it? I think at this point through you, Mr. Chair, um, indefinite would be appropriate. Okay, no problem. So looking for a motion as uh, uh, Mr. Nurse already indicated. So can can I, uh, okay. So motion uh, put forward by uh, Mr. Nurse to defer indefinite both these application B18021 and B18022. Do we have seconder? Second, seconded by Ms. Doffler, all in favor? These two applications are indefinitely deferred. Any other written request? we have or anyone in this audience wishes to withdraw or uh, yes mr Holmes, please come forward good morning mr chair members of the committee my name is richard domes from Ganyan walker domes urban planners um we represent fatah developments inc the owner Excuse of 14. Me. one second sure. i have conflict so you make a you know, it's b18039 that's right uh, okay. b18139 yep okay yep. one second please that have declared a conflict so if one of the other uh, members can assume the chair for the matter okay. please carry on thank you well, good morning mr chair um richard domes from ganyan walker domes uh, we represent fate developments inc who's the owner of 1453 queen street um, the application uh, before the committee is to permit a number of variances uh, to facilitate a restaurant, a dining room and a takeout restaurant, and to um, vary the site-specific Schedule C. Um, the staff report that was released this uh, past week uh, spoke to um, a request for an indefinite deferral because of uh, clarifications required as to whether the properties have merged on title. Uh, we were able to provide the clerk only yesterday um, that confirmation that it is one single property. Uh, on that basis, we are um, accepting the staff's request for deferral, uh, uh, indefinite deferral, although we believe that we'll be back at uh, committee in short order after staff have had time to look at the new information. Thank you. Uh, staff, do you have any concern with respect to the deferral? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we are recommending deferral of the application, so we would be um, in agreement with the applicant. Thank you. Is anybody in the audience here to speak to this matter on Queen Street West? Please step up. Before the Secretary Treasurer, would you please state your full name and address, please? Uh, my name is Ari Bowie. I live on Danfield Court, just behind the proposed area that you want to change. And we have a group of mm -hmm. our residents here. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, if I can have the municipal address where you <coughs> reside. I live on 40 Danfield Court. Thank you. And we have residents of the street all present. <clears throat> so um, at, at this point, Mr. Bowie, the, um, uh, the applicant and the city have agreed to a deferral to see if they can narrow some of the issues. And because the property is one piece, they have to redo the uh, application for adjustments. Okay. So we don't really know what we're dealing with now. So what and you're saying I'd is nothing is, going, nothing is going to happen at this time until, until the new thing is drawn That's up. correct, and you'll get notice of uh, any other That's meeting. That's good. Okay. So we don't have to check it right now, so nothing's going to happen. Thank you, now. Mr. Billy. Thank you. May I have a motion? Indefinitely. Agreed. Seconded and agreed. Thank you.
I'll give up the chair to Mr. Tata. So one last time, is there anybody else in the audience wishes to uh, withdraw or deferral any application or any matter being discussed today? None? <coughs> For those unfamiliar with the Committee of Adjustment Procedure and uh, Process, I would like to give a brief explanation and scope. Following some procedural uh, matter that we have already undergone, the Secretary Treasurer will call the applications by announcing the application's number, the name of applicant, and address of the property subject to the application. The applicant or authorized agent representing the applicant will then come to the podium, state their name and addresses for the record, and then present uh, the application. I request that you reserve any questions or comments pertaining to the staff report until after planning staff has had an opportunity to present. If there is anyone in uh, attendance who wishes to speak to a particular application, you will be given the opportunity to do so when the application is presented. Any decision made here today may be appealed by the uh, appeal to the local planning ap appeal tribunal, LPAT. Previously, uh, the appeal process was dealt with the, through the Ontario Municipal Board. However, the province has introduced new legislation in the form of Bill 139, which came into force on April 3, 2018. Appeals received in the city clerk's office associated with minor variants and consent applications will be processed and forward to LPAT as they were previously processed and sent to the OMB. This process may be commenced with the Secretary Treasurer by filing a completed appeal form and filing fee within the prescribed 20 days appeal period. Information pertaining to the appeal process may be obtained by contacting the Secretary Treasurer within the City Clerk's Office. Now we move on to the consent applications. A18062, Roofmark Canada Limited. Property is located at 309 Rutherford Road South. Anyone from 309 Rutherford Road South? Yes, I'm agent of that property. Please come forward, sir. Your name and your address, please. Uh, good morning. My name is Hassan Qaimi. I am the agent of uh, IKO Industries uh, for the property located at 309 Rutherford Road. Mm -hmm. Our application is for minor variance to reduce the uh, parking spots as per zoning by law. Okay. Is there anything else you wishes to add? No, I have no issue. Okay. Uh, committee members, is there any questions to the agent? None. Is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? This application is supportable subject to the following conditions being imposed. Mm -hmm. One, the owner finalized a site plan approval under city file SP17-081 and execute a site plan agreement to impose any required financial securities and insurance to the satisfaction of the director of development services. The failure to comply with and com maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval now in the void. Okay, sir, uh, you understand and uh, accept these conditions? Yes, exactly, I accept. Okay. Committee members, if there are no any other questions, look look forward for a motion. Motion to approve with conditions. Motion to approve with conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Mr. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Calling application A six eighteen one one six Syed Mosin. Hosseini Milani, 
The property is located at 100 DeGray Drive. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, staff, and Good morning, members. My name is Frank Belcastro, and I'm representing uh, uh, Saeed Malaney and his wife, uh, 100 Degray Drive. Um, an application was submitted to staff for three minor variances some time ago. Uh, we've had several dis discussions with uh, pl uh, planning, um, more specifically Jana Jen Jenkins, and it was in relationship to providing additional information. I was somewhat surprised this morning because I never received this letter until about quarter to 9 a.m. that they were not recommending approval for the minor variances. Sorry, did you receive this letter today, quarter to nine a.m.? I'm sorry, sir. Did you receive this letter you're saying this morning, quarter to nine? I just picked this up here this morning. This wasn't sent to me as an agent for the owner. Through you, Mr. Chair, the the report was sent to Mr. Belcastro on Friday, early Friday morning. Okay, I haven't received it in the mail, but... Not that, in the mail, by email, sir. Okay. Um, anyway, my, please my continue, mistake, because that's the standard yeah. procedure. Everyone get uh, either late yeah. Thursday evening or uh, Friday that, morning. That's okay. Um, the owner is requesting these variances uh, to install a fitness spa, uh -huh. which is a unit that uh, is, a, this is a similar to a spa, but it has a motor that propels the water, and it also has a treadmill inside for exercise and fitness. Because of the dimensions of the spa and certain clearances that are required, um, we've had to ask for a uh, five foot reduction in the setback on one side and about a two and a half foot reduction in the setback on the opposite side. Um, that was the only way that, that it would fit. To use it all year round, uh, we enclosed it with a uh, cabana or sunroom and um, it requires certain clearances for maintenance and security, people not falling into the pool. Uh, so that's why the setbacks were requested uh, in, in uh, reduction to the rear yard setback. The fence height is relatively a privacy, five foot privacy fence on either side, which if that becomes an issue can be reduced to glass at a four foot height. Um, it was basically a, a screened uh, railing or uh, a foot higher than the railing because of the railing to the west is glass mm -hmm. and on the two sides you ask for some privacy so a five foot uh, screen was requested mm -hmm. the, the, the screen is basically five feet higher than the top of the deck so from grade it's it's the variances as requested but it's really either a four-foot uh, railing or a five-foot screen. Um, don't really think that has that big of an impact. And as I say, if, it, uh, if the um, screen is a problem for visibility or privacy or uh, obstruction of any uh, concerns with neighbors, which none of them have expressed that, mm -hmm. we can uh, have a look at that as well. And the third item was, in order to get from the deck to grade, we, we required a fence, uh, excuse me, a uh, stairs. Mm -hmm. And um, in, in looking at the um, uh, side yard setback, I was under the assumption that stairs were not consider, considered an obstruction in that area. However, if that becomes an issue, we can flip the stairs to the other side and eliminate that variance. So really the only question is the depth of rear yard setback that we're asking for, and it can't be done any other way than having that, whether it's uh, a unit by itself or it's enclosed to be used year round. We require certain lengths for that unit to be installed 
maintain safety and provide service and maintenance. Um, I'd like to turn over the rest of the my discussion to Matt here. He's the um, one of the, the manufacturer because the owner has now gone to a prefabricated unit. Okay. Well, I I'll turn it over to Matt. What's your name and address for the record, sir? My name is Matthew Thomas from Four Seasons Sunrooms. Uh -huh. I am, uh, my address is 682 Burnett Avenue, Cambridge, Ontario. Okay, please go ahead. Um, I, I was retained by the ho homeowner to build this construct structure and I also did the design. Uh -huh. We worked fairly hard, did several different designs, trying to meet all rear yard setbacks. However, because of the size of the unit, which cannot get any smaller, and because of the shape of the house, uh, location of windows and all that, it was basically impossible to put the room, the, the swim spa sideways, parallel to the back of the house. So we had to turn it. And because of where, the location of the motors, like Frank said, and uh, you require certain walking around this unit and access to the plumbing and everything, there was no way other than to make the room the size that it is. Uh, now, the reason for closing this in, number one is the, the swim spa is there for fitness and therapy. Uh, the main one of the reasons to close it in is reli religious privacy mm -hmm. um, uh, in that it has to be sheltered uh, for privacy reasons. Now, the, I believe the, the term fence for the uh, side yard, the fence height, I think fence is the wrong term. Uh, I believe my understanding, and I'm by all means not an expert on the bylaws in Brampton. I believe the understanding is a privacy fence can be put up on a deck that, that goes up to six feet tall, provided it is at least four feet away from the property line. So I'm not even sure that we need that. We will get to hear the staff after. Okay. So regarding your this question. And, and like Frank said, I understand the stairs, the stairs can be flipped. So it, mostly it's the rear yard setback. I do have a couple images. Uh -huh. The owner, and I don't know whether I can pass these to you. Yeah, sure, stop. We'll the the owner did, uh, was quite diligent and, and insistent on, he wants this to be very, uh, blend into the house, look like it's part of the house. Uh, so he's very concerned about the cosmetic look of it. So we matched all the brick. We were matching the color of the windows and everything so that it looks like it's part of the house. Uh, also, the total height of this room is nine feet tall which is only two feet above what I believe the maximum fence height is. Um, and he could put a shed right along that property line that's even eight or nine feet tall. So I don't think it's why, yes, it's obstructing the neighbor's view slightly. Because it is coming off the basement level and not the main floor level, mm -hmm. I don't see it as being a major obstruction to, to their view or their, their use of their, their enjoyment of their backyard. Going to be put together. Oh, there we go. So that shows the privacy fence that they were talking about and the stairs, which both could be eliminated from this design. Okay, is there anything else you wish to add? I don't believe so. I think. Uh that's all we can say with respect to the application, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman. No uh, problem. Just in uh, finalization, we didn't see it as undesirable in the area. I think the aesthetics of it, the addition to it, and the enhanced value of the area is beneficial to the area. And it is also, we feel, that compliance has stated by the planning department that it is in general compliance mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, official plan of the area. Just, uh, uh, just as a committee, I would like to ask you, as you mentioned, you received this letter this morning, but however, uh, the general practice is we do send out the staff sent out on Friday or even Thursday uh, evenings. Uh, would you uh, 
uh, what uh, when you said you you did not get enough time would you like to review uh, things or you like to defer into a further date or anything so, i think i don't, i think we're uh, in this particular um, rendering mr chairman mm -hmm. we've gone to all the lengths to provide something that fits and we can't we can't do it any other way okay. so if this isn't allowed with respect to the the uh, um, by law yep. then it's either got to be an open unit which will still require similar setbacks mm -hmm. uh, so the he either doesn't you're not allowing him to do that or to do that we need that rear guard setback and the other two items can be slightly modified to uh, prevent any interference of visibility sunlight or whatever but we've talked to the neighbors and they had no objection to to any of this yeah. so if I may yes. my, my experience shows that uh, when for permit reasons these projects don't go ahead to close in the swim spas mm -hmm. they will probably still be able to build a deck on top a large deck mm -hmm. maybe not out quite that far but as far as code goes they will put the swim spa underneath but they will close it in with some less attractive wall mm -hmm. than brick okay so these <coughs> sure no problem ma'am are you one of the neighbor the immediate neighbor of this your name and address for the record please uh, my name is yan hua li could you please spell it yeah y-a-n-h-u-a mm -hmm. last name l-i okay thank you okay. and your address please 98 degree drive okay. brampton so you have the next Sorry. door neighbor do you yeah. mr chair it's love 35 didn't, didn't catch the address 98 degree yeah 98 yeah. i emailed to the secretary i okay, said i post yeah, yeah i post because it's the addition is too deep mm -hmm. and too close and the fence too high it's not as it, the picture sees mm -hmm. you see this, the picture this is actually the, drawing this is not the real picture right yes yeah so no problem see the picture the upstairs mm -hmm. is right on the neighbor fence they said the fence will be four and a half meters mm -hmm. there will be a second second uh, uh, story ceiling high mm -hmm. was well, too high first is block the sign second will be make so much pressure okay no problem right it's too big block mm -hmm. for us nobody want to buy a house you have a addition neighbor addition so deep i just want everybody sitting here to imagine if you have a neighbor have this condition, what do you feel when you're sitting in the backyard of you, your house backyard? We do understand your concerns. We yeah. do uh, get to hear uh, the neighbors' concerns on every committee hearing. Because so I, didn't, I didn't get any information from my neighbor before I got this later, okay. at Friday afternoon. OK, no problem. Okay. Is there anything else you wishes to add at this point? Yeah, this, that's what I'm seeing is First one mm -hmm. is too close. Okay. And the second one's too deep in the yard. Mm -hmm. Third one, the fence is too high. Because it's, my wall, my master bedroom is close to the, to the fence of this house. Okay. To their addition. If they build the fence, the addition is that high and that close, we don't have privacy. Mm -hmm. We get we get feel squeezed in the backyard. Okay. Okay. No problem. We have noted your concerns. Yeah, that's all of my concerns. Okay, thank you. So we oppose uh, this. Yeah, no problem. Uh, please wait. I have some procedure matter to take yeah. care. Then you can come back. Is okay. there anybody else in the audience which is to speak on this application at this point? Seeing none. Yeah, please okay. come forward, sir. Your name and address for the record. My name is Joe Lima, and I live at 104 Degree Drive, which okay. is two houses yep. up from this. Mm -hmm. my, con my concern was when I read uh, item number two is that uh, there is a 15-foot fence. No, I don't understand what this 15-foot fence is. That to the uh, top of the cabana, or what? What fence is he talking about? That's just a privacy fence, and I think fence is the wrong word, like I mentioned. I believe the codes actually allow on a second story deck a privacy fence. See those up four to six panels feet tall. on the right? Yeah. But it, I don't think fence oh, is the right it. word, and yeah. that is oh. not on the property line. That is actually right. four but feet it, in from the property so line. So this is not 
descriptive. That's, correct. that's not correct. Staff so, to answer those questions. Uh, I would uh, not advise the members to engage into the conversation. Okay. So when your turn will come, then you're allowed to speak. So my concern was the, uh, I didn't understand why build a 15 foot fence backed onto a conservation area. Mm -hmm. And I want this clarified that now that I know that he's talking about the privacy panels mm -hmm. on the south side, that's what he's talking about. Okay. So and I have the same concerns as uh, the previous speaker sure. uh, about the eyesore, which it is. And it's pretty close. It's extended quite a bit. And it just blocks a lot of view from the neighbors. Thank you very much. No problem. If there were anything else you wishes to add later on, you can always raise your hand. Uh, one more time, anyone else in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Sorry, this application? Seeing none, committee members, any questions so far? Seeing none. Staff, could you please win your comments? And then we will get back to you, and then you can continue. Sorry, uh, Ms. Meisler, some information? No, it's a copy of the staff recommendation report. Oh, okay, no problem. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, staff are of the opinion that under the Planning Act, this application does not meet all four tests. Uh, there are no implications with regard to the official plan or the secondary plan. However, the final three factors, whether the variances maintain the intent of the zoning bylaw, whether they're desirable or whether minor in nature, uh, we feel those three tests are not met and are therefore recommending that the application is not supportable. Okay. And uh, some of the comments came regarding the height, height of the fence. Uh, if uh, we can have some clarity on that, uh, Ms. Grozola. Thank you, Mr. Chair, certainly. Um, it is a fence. It is a fence on top of a deck. The City of Brampton's zoning bylaw does not make any allowance for privacy screening or fences on top of the deck. The fence height, therefore, is measured from the ground, as any fence height would. There's no restriction in our bylaw on the length or the setback of a privacy fence. Therefore, we have no choice but to treat it as a fence. Mm -hmm. It's clearly a screen fence. It's it's obstructing view, and it's meant to, to, to facilitate privacy on top of the deck. But it is quite high off the ground and would not be permitted by the city's zoning bylaw. Um, there was also some comment about the stairs extending mm -hmm. from the second story. Um, I'm not sure how you get to the stairs shown in this drawing, but the um, it's not so much the stairs and the straight run of steps, it's the landing on top of the stairs. So the landing and then the, the drawing provided with committee, there's actually two landings at various points down the side of the stairs. The landing is the setback that is measured and that landing must meet building setbacks of 1.2 meters. Currently it's positioned just a little over a foot away from the side lot line. Thank you. So I hope you understand now that if I, I appreciate that. The measure, I, I appreciate clean. that. And if we could, uh, uh, if the f if the privacy fence was eliminated, mm -hmm. and uh, the stairs were eliminated, moved to the other side, I guess my question is: is Would the the zoning department have a different opinion? As uh, and because we we are certainly willing to revise the plan. Okay, uh, well, staff can answer that, but at this point, I guess maybe then uh, uh, it's better if you wishes to revise the plan. Uh, I'm not an expert on the measurements, but I think maybe you need uh, more time or something to come back, but definitely I'd love to hear what staff's opinion on that. If, if, that, if that's what they're rec everybody's so recommending, is, uh, now, we can do that. We can put together in front of committee, uh, and then committee can decide, but I, I would uh, love to hear staff's uh, comments on if you are suggesting some changes in your application. And so would that mean we revise the drawings and revise the application and resubmit to another time? Is that what you're suggesting? Ms. Myers? Through you, Mr. Chair, I think uh, it would be appropriate to hear staff's position on that. Yep. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, we would certainly be supportive of anything that takes away two of those three variances. And, mm -hmm. and if I'm understanding correctly, I think that's what's proposed. Uh, the fact of that uh, rear yard setback would likely still be a concern. Um, I don't know if there's any way, you know, we did discuss earlier w with them about flipping the pool the other way. I don't know if anything could be incorporated into the existing ground level of the home. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't want to give a false impression that we would still be supportive of the, 
the setback, the rear yard setback. I do understand, uh, Ms. Jenkins, uh, if uh, this application is going to be revised, uh, obviously the staff is going to look uh, from a fresh new angle and it's going to be completely new application uh, or with uh, some amended uh, changes. So it's all your call and I guess to the neighbors, uh, as you may aware or you uh, heard the, uh, our conversation, uh, we are working on it and uh, there might be some changes as applicant is already uh, suggesting. So anything, uh, any outcome uh, out of today's uh, uh, hearing, well, you will be notified. So I hope uh, the staff and uh, uh, I hope the staff has un answered all your concerns at this point. Okay. Can so, I, sir, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just make one more comment? Please go ahead, Frank. It appears that two of the issues have been tentatively resolved. Uh, the addition with the setback and the concern is that there's blockage of view and whatever. If we were to propose, and it's pretty well where it is at now, there's a window there that allows visibility through the uh, uh, solarium or cabana. Um, if that were to be taken back to the setback line, would that still? I completely sympathize with you that you are willing to amend and other gentlemen as well, but I am not in opinion to give you any answer at this point unless we really look the application in front of us with the drawings and everything. Okay. I, I hope you understand our situation. Yes, I do. Yes, right? Thank so you. what I'm looking uh, in order for us to move, either you can request a deferral and the committee members can look into it, then obviously we need staff's input on that and uh, the circulation because it's going to be uh, amended application. Yes. So if you are proposing something like that and you wishes to come back to the committee in some later date, uh, we can ask for the timings and you can advise us how much time you, you required for that. Yes, Mr. Chairman, we would. So how much time do you think you need? Um, <coughs> Next meeting we have to ask because if there is a circulation required, then we have some uh, deadlines. Yes, sir. Uh, to revise the, the, the drawings or whatever we need to do will not take very long at all. Ms. Myers, what is the deadline for the circulation for the next meeting? Through, if for through you, Mr. Chair, I can confirm that we would not be able to uh, accommodate this application on the next meeting, which is October 2nd, because we have already um, exhausted that filing deadline of September 4th. If we were to accommodate it for October 23rd hearing, mm -hmm. all revisions have to be submitted on or before September 25th in order for staff to have adequate time to advance this application. That is October 25th? Sorry, that's October 23rd hearing with a submission deadline for revised information no later than September 25th. However, I would again defer to staff in terms of their timelines in which to review the, re the revised information. If I may, uh, if, if we were to ask the committee to make a decision based on those two, uh, alleviating those two variances, and they, they would that be would that mean if they did not approve it that we would have to resubmit right from the beginning exactly with the new filing fee and everything that's okay. my understanding right Ms. Myers through Mr. Chair I can confirm that there would not be an additional filing fee okay it would still remain an active application however amended in some fashion or are we are we proposing a brand new application if we are proposing a new application, then that's a, a new ahead, submission Crouch. with the accompanying filing fee of five hundred and ninety-five dollars. Mr. Crouch, please. Uh, you, Mr. Chair, I, um, my understanding is that uh, they're going to produce new drawings. Those drawings have to be circulated. We have two neighbors here objecting to this application. They should have. Uh, they should be provided the time to also review the, the fresh application. Mm -hmm. And what I would support is an indefinite deferral, mm -hmm. uh, not to say that it won't appear on the October 25th meeting, but to uh, provide staff with adequate time to ensure circulation can occur to the neighbors in a timely fashion. I think that's uh, proper suggestions. We so, appreciate that. All right. So would you... Uh, 
an agreement if uh, are you uh, looking for an indefinite deferral so that gives everyone some time and uh, whenever you can ready you can always contact uh, secretary treasurer or staff has enough time to review things and so as the neighbors as Mr. I think Prof. we will also uh, I wouldn't mind yeah. reaching out to the neighbors and consulting with the them a little bit ahead of time. Yeah. Um, one question, Mr. Chairman. Please go ahead. Um, with the previous application, they requested construction drawings. Is that something that would have to be supplied again? Or would uh, just a rendering with uh, the dimensions on the site plan be sufficient? Staff can answer that, or maybe you can contact after. Ms. Jenkins, are you in position to answer their question at this point? I believe that we would still need the same level of detail as provided this time, although I defer to Ms. Corzola on that. Construction drawings are always helpful in order to accurately determine the extent of the variances required. Um, obviously, construction drawings would have to be provided for um, at the time of building permit in any event, but I would hate for a rendering such as this to come forward without any dimensions. Um, and then at the time of building permit, there's slight variation in what the committee may or may not have approved. Um, uh, ideally, we, we would want as much detail as possible in advance of any consideration. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Tiger? Yeah, I just wanted to add, I mean, the drawing should have dimensions of windows and those sorts of things so we can understand what the proposed solution is and how that relates to the site and the property. So, I mean, it may not have to have the 100% detail of what was provided here, but it should be something that we're able to review and understand the, um, you know, the magnitude of what's being proposed. So, yeah. yeah, that's understandable. So is there any concern after you can always go back to the staff and always ask for, so I think uh, indefinite deferral as Mr. Crouch suggested is appropriate in this, uh, yes, given Mr. the circumstances. Yeah, we'll, we'll consult staff and uh, uh, as we, we're working with before and and uh, ensure that everything is, is satisfactory as to what we're presenting. <coughs> exactly. So, yeah. committee members, if no further discussion. Motion for an indefinite deferral. Motion by Mr. Crouch for an indefinite deferral for application A18116. Seconded by Ms. Duffer. All in favor? This uh, application has been deferred indefinitely. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thank you. Calling application A18130, United Association of Local 787 Office and Training Center. The property is located at 419 Deerhurst Drive. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, committee members. My name is George Palantonio. Um, I am uh, the applicant, uh, sorry, I am the agent uh, representing uh, Local 787. Um, my address, uh, 207 Edgeley Boulevard in Concord. Okay, okay please go ahead. Yes. Um, we're here today to ask for uh, relief from two bylaws. First is a side yard setback. Uh, 1.5 meters, whereas 3.0 meters is the minimum required. Um, that setback is to uh, a building, well, it's not a building, it's a support structure uh, shown as building F on the site plan. Uh, that is a, those are two steel containers which have been ganged together and are used to support a solar panel array. Uh, the second um, item is um, to allow for us to increase the gross floor area uh -huh. of um, buildings uh, C, D, and E. Uh, the allowable under the bylaw is 100 square meters. Uh, I'd like to mention that building C is existing and was constructed in 2003. Uh -huh. At that time, it obtained a building permit and a minor variance to allow, to allow the, the construction of it. Um, Local 787 is a nonprofit a union organization which represents approximately 4,000 members, individual members, and about 200 contractors. In addition to their offices, which are housed in Building A, the big building, 
uh, it also provides uh, training, both in classroom and in shop lab style where the members get hands-on experience. Um, and of course, they warehouse all of the equipment and the tools they need to do that. Uh, Building C um, utilize uh, only is primarily a warehousing facility, mm -hmm. about 80% of the time. 20% uh, of the time, they will have some training sessions in there. Sessions are two to three weeks, and then months will go by between another session. Um, the reason for C is because it is sort of a temporary setup. Um, the local has uh, goes to other venues to provide training. For example, in Northern Ontario, where they will rent the venue so they can uh, do their training, upgrading as well, upgrading of technology as technology changes, and students don't have to, or contractors do not have to travel to the facility here in Brampton. They can do it out there. So the equipment can is shared at all of these other venues. In Building A, it is sort of a permanent setup, and that is why uh, C is so useful. It's very efficient for them. Um, D was constructed about two or three years after building, sorry, building D was constructed about two or three years after C. And 2005 approximately? Pardon me? 2005, six approximately? Approximately, yes. yes. And uh, uh, our proposal to combine the two buildings, adding a little bit more square footage to the gross floor, is really an efficiency matter with the Ontario Building Code. It works believe it or not, it works better to create one building mm -hmm. instead of two separate buildings. They are, they are, all, they are part nine buildings, they're small buildings. Um, the, uh, a note to the uh, square footage, uh, the building C's um, a gross floor area Mm -hmm. was increased from, allowed to be uh, 279 square meters. So, sorry, 185 square meters is building C, the original building. By what we're adding to it is about 185 square meters for total, uh, sorry, <laughs> getting this mixed up. Uh, we're increasing the area by about 93 square meters in total. So it's not a large building when you get down to it. Um, we have read the staff report which supports our application mm -hmm. and I'd also like to mention one thing about the requirements. Um, number two uh, asks that we provide, uh, obtain our building permit within 90 days after final committee's approval. Yeah. Um, we, we have applied for a site plan approval and my experience is uh, I don't think you can do it in 90 days. It usually takes uh, two submissions to get it approved, and, and each submission is about three months. So uh, if, if, um, if possible, mm -hmm. we'd like to make that 90-day requirement after obtaining site plan approval. And we have started that process. <coughs> we will... Uh we will uh, discuss this with staff when the staff's turn will come to talk. Okay? Okay. Besides that, are you in agreement with staff's recommendations as presented? Yes, yes we are, except for that number two item. Okay, no days. problem. No problem, we'll discuss about that, okay? Okay, sure. Committee members, any questions to the applicant so far? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff members, could you please uh, put in your comments? Through you, Mr. Chairman, staff mm -hmm. can accommodate an extension of um, acquiring the building permit. Mm -hmm. um, so the, con uh, the recommendation is that the ap application is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Two, the owner obtained a building permit within 180 days of the committee's final decision. Three, a grading plan prepared by a professional engineer be approved by the City of Brampton Public Works Eng and Engineering Department through site plan process. Four, the owner finalizes site plan approval under City File SP 18-044, 
execute a stipend agreement and post any required financial security and insurance to the satisfaction of the director of the development services. Five, the failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render its approval now and void. Okay, so I guess 180 days is good enough time for you? Yeah, I, I think so, yes. <laughs> so if no further questions, I'm looking for a motion to proceed. Motion to approve by Mr. Nurse uh, with the amended conditions. Seconded by Ms. Duffler. All in favor? This application is approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Calling application A18131, Diagram Developments, Brampton, Inc. Properties located at 5227 Mayfield Road. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of committee. My name is Alistair Shields from KLM Planning Partners, Inc. We are the agent on behalf of the applicant. Um, the, we had submitted an application for minor variance to permit a, a temporary use of an existing building on the subject lands. Uh, temporary uses uh, would be permitted as of right if construction on the lands had started. Um, our client intends to file applications for a draft plan of subdivision on these lands. Um, however, those have not been filed yet. They also have several other parcels in the immediate area, uh, two of which have been, uh, uh, are subject to ongoing draft plan applications. Um, now, the, the existing building, it was always the intent to use this as uh, a decor center for the subject lands and other lands in the area. Um, it was brought to the attention of the, of the owners that the previous owners of the lands had built this uh, structure without a building permit. And my client is now required to get a building permit for, these, for this building, but cannot do so uh, without a minor variance to permit the proposed use. Um, so that's why we are uh, requesting uh, the minor variance. Um, I've read the staff report um, and I understand the, the staff's concerns about timing. Um, however, I think that, uh, you know, given the, I guess, unique circumstances, I would, I would uh, uh, request that uh, approval be considered. Um, there are also other lands that my client is in the process of purchasing. Mm -hmm. They have not closed yet, um, but it's a draft approved plan uh, nearby the SKS holdings. Uh, Draft Plan 21T12019B. Uh, they have an agreement of purchase and sale on those lands, but have not yet closed. Um, and the decor center will be used for those lands as well. In the similar neighborhood? For the other lands you're mentioning? Pardon me? In the similar neighborhood, in the same municipality yes. or somewhere else? Same municipality. It's at the northeast corner of uh, Countryside and Torbrand. Okay. No problem. Committee members, any questions so far to the applicant? Mm -hmm. Seeing none. Just for the record, we have a uh, no objection letter from TRCA. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Uh, through Mr. Chairman, staff recommend uh, defer the application indefinitely. Mm -hmm. um, so the the applicant, just uh, from the information provided, um, they have two staff aware there are two applications um, owned by the same uh, applied by the same owner mm -hmm. for a draft plan of subdivision. Uh, now it has been appealed by the applic by the owner. So we are not sure about the timeline of the approval. And uh, the applicants also mentioned there are some parcels in the neighbor, uh, in the adjacent area that is under negotiation for purchase and sale. So we do not know the timeline for the future subdivision. And for, for this reason, 
um, the use for uh, the decor standard, we, we do not support um, this particular use because we would, have, we would want to have a better understanding of the timeline of approval of the subdivisions. Okay. Uh, and the staff report says uh, three years uh, uh, for the decor center, but in the application it doesn't say about three years. It just say to permit a decor center, whereas the bylaw does not permit. So where's this three years came from? Uh, Mr. Chair, I can speak to that. Please go ahead. Um, the, th the three year time frame was requested uh, by the applicant. Okay. My understanding is, as staff mentioned, that there are two applications already uh, under review by the city staff, and uh, they are not sure how long it's going to take. So if you are requesting three years from now, I don't think so that's <laughs> feasible for. Like, I, I, I personally feel, uh, uh, you know, uh, if there are some requirements in Brampton, it's better for the residents to go to pick and choose the decor within the Brampton rather than going into Woodbridge or any other part of uh, GTA. Mm -hmm. But uh, my understanding is, as your other applications are not clear, and uh, I think uh, even if committee look into three years and by the time maybe it's past two and a half years or so, you might have to come back anyway. That's, that's a risk that uh, we're willing to take. Mm -hmm if you would, would be willing to consider uh, approval with a three-year time frame? Well, we can always uh, discuss that. Uh, the committee members can always. Uh, uh, and my other, uh, just a question, right about where this decor center, uh, the applicant is requesting, I have noticed, uh, because when I, where I live, I go and I take Mayfield sometimes, and I always avoid because of extensive construction. So how about the parking and everything, uh, and especially when there's a construction going on on Mayfield? That's my another concern. And I, uh, I, and I have <coughs> noticed it's not uh, uh, about the parking issue as well there. I don't see there's too many parking and... Uh, there, there is an existing uh, parking lot there mm -hmm. uh, that was used for the, for the previous garden center use. Mm -hmm. um, and from what I understand, it, from discussing with staff, there is sufficient parking uh, to to meet the zoning requirements. Through you, Mr. Chair, if I might just comment on that, um, if an approval was to be granted and then building permits obtained, prior to obtaining a building permit, a site plan approval would be required and the parking arrangement, obviously, and appropriate access um, would have to be verified through approval of a, a, an appropriate site plan to facilitate this use. Any members? Uh, that anticipates one of my questions. The applicant, uh, what are you prepared to do to facilitate the uh, one way in and out that requested by the region? Uh, that That's something that would have to be uh, reviewed. I mean, I would expect that the city would want a site plan approval anyway, so that would have to be dealt with through that. So it, if that's the case, what's the purpose of us making a decision today? Well, the, for you, Mr. Chair, the uh, approving the minor variance would allow us to, to get started on, on the other required uh, uh, applications for building permit for site plan. And whereabouts is the subdivision where sales have taken place? Pardon me? Country, countryside and how, uh, how close is the subdivision? A it's, it's just uh, at the south end of the block. So the, the, the building is at Mayfield and Torbram and the draft approved subdivision is countryside and program. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, any, any other questions by committee members? I do appreciate you come forward and I'm fully sympathized with your application, but however, I personally feel the uh, staff is right in this position and uh, I am inclined to support indefinite deferral on this. Okay. But the rest of the committee uh, can decide how, which way they wishes to go. Okay, many members. If there's no further uh, uh, discussion, then we'd like to see a motion to proceed. Motion to support staff recommendation by Mr. Nurse, seconded by Mr. Doppler. All in favor? This application is uh, deferred indefinitely. Thank you.
Filing Application A18132, Parb Jinder, Balbear, and Jaspreet Holty. The property is located at 9 Ocean Avenue. Good morning, Mr. Chair Good and morning. the committee members. My name is Sandeep Mutar. I am owner's daughter representing them. Um, the application that they have is to permit an exterior stairway leading to a below grade entrance. And the second one is to permit an interior side yard setback. So to my understanding, the main issue here is because of not enough setback, there is an issue or conflicting with the neighbor's property uh, as regards to the drainage around the house. Um, we do have a letter of no objection from the neighbors um, who understands what it is and he he, he's okay with that, so I really don't know what else we can do to resolve this or what other issues are there. Sure, no problem. Thank you for coming forward. Uh, we do have a letter from the neighbor. Is this the neighbor uh, next door, uh, right? Uh, to the right to the house. And they have the similar entrances, uh, similar yes. to right? Yeah. In my opinion, their entrance is not right either. Right? Okay. So I don't know how, uh, in which position they gave you this supporting letter. But uh, I do appreciate you come forward. But at the same time, the drainage staff can uh, clear further. It's not about just uh, the property line. It's about uh, proper drainage coming the water from your backyard to the front. Okay. So uh, anyway, we'll get to hear uh, everyone. And then uh, if you wishes to add further, you can always more than welcome. Sure. Okay. Many members, any questions to the applicant so far? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, this application does not meet the forecast. Mm -hmm. uh, in particular, it does not conform to the intent of the zoning bylaw. Mm -hmm. uh, so the side yard setback reduction is not supported by engineering staff. Uh, a minimum of 0 0.6 meter setback is required to convey the drainage to the street. Um, this proposal would have 0.1 meter setback then with, which will be direct drainage onto the neighbor's property. For this reason, it does not conform to the intent of the zoning, so uh, staff cannot support this application. Uh, we did speak to an engineer and he mentioned something about that to resolve this. There's something called weeping tile can resolve this issue where that makes sure that the drainage is not to the neighbor's property and it kind of still sweeps into the outside the house. Um, so I don't know if that that is something that the city agrees with or approves. What my uh, uh, position on these ones, especially the detached properties where we, uh, and uh, in my position over the time I'm on committee is, uh, sometimes the semi-detached has only one way to go into the backyard and your property is detached property. And uh, I know it's not all the way up to 1.2 meter, but there is some space. The problem is your next door neighbor has put together the similar things. But uh, just uh, during my site visit, I, 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 I noted uh, their entrance uh, has drainage in, in, uh, in the blow area where you enter uh, to your uh, basement, uh, or sorry, to your side yard entrance. But at the same time, uh, some people, what I have seen in the past, uh, since your uh, below grid entrance is not really deep in the uh, in the level uh, yeah. from the ground level, I mean, uh, the best way could have been if uh, there's a proper steps. For example, two steps going down and then the landing with proper drainage, and then two step up to your backyard. Okay. So similar something like that. Uh, I think uh, we all would have been uh, sympathized, but at this point, given the circumstances unless you really need some time to, and I, I cannot uh, uh, confirm, or I, I, I can only speak for myself, not uh, on behalf of the rest of the committee. Uh, but in, in the past, we, we had allowed people to go back to uh, discuss with their engineers and come, come back with the proposed uh, changes if they're willing to do. And I think uh, I'm willing to look at something like that. Otherwise, uh, I, I am in agreement with the uh, staff's uh, opinion. I uh, unfortunately do not uh, feel comfortable supporting your application at this point unless you are suggesting that you will be back with some changes. In, in these pictures, you can clearly see 
uh, your neighbor has put together some of those steps they can uh, even though I'm not uh, saying that uh, they are they have done everything right but they have the drainage here and plus they have these steps to go sure. go back versus your is uh, completely rough and uh, I, I didn't see any proper drainage it does have two steps to it I think mm -hmm. uh, but the drainage I guess I have to speak to the engineer to see exactly uh, if that's something that needs to be done for sure we will look into that and get it done uh, in order to pursue that avenue what do I need to do the next step like re present the application again or uh, go back to the staff and rediscuss it with the pictures well there are a few scenarios first of all uh, staff can answer if there is any order to comply and at what stage uh, your property is uh, at the same time it's up to the committee's decision but however you can request a deferral at this point okay. uh, I, I believe that could be indefinite or if there is a, some uh, uh, order to comply already been issued by the city then we have to put a timeline on it sure okay um, sure that would be great if you guys can let me know what the timeline is so, so that what I are you requesting uh, um, I'm gonna request from my engineer and from my architect to put uh, two steps and the drainage right at the bottom well, don't count me that I said two steps. No, but I would really I, I just it. give my honest opinion yeah. on it, right? Based or on whatever my it approves, um, complies with the city according to that. That's what. And even do. with two steps, I'm not sure that staff that will satisfy staff's uh, yes. uh, bylaw standards. Just okay. to be clear. I would okay. request even the staff if there is any additions to it that um, you want me to look into in details and re approach it. <laughs> Okay, staff, could you please, Ms. Garza, how about you? Sure, just responding to your question, Mr. Chair. Um, there has been an order to comply issued um, for this construction without a permit. Um, I would encourage the owner not to do anything to this construction and to, to try to modify it, you know, as discussed here today. Um, if there are plans to alter the configuration, they should be brought to um, staff for discussion, both with building division staff as well as planning staff who would have to then um, decide whether or not they support the variance to permit the entrance to be in the side yard. I do want to offer a comment um, as well on the neighbor's side entrance. Mm -hmm. um, that entrance was actually constructed with a permit in 2001, and that would be prior to the restrictions on below grade side entrances that were introduced in the bylaw in 2002. Okay. So this is uh, the perfect example how a neighbor can feel that why the next door neighbor been allowed, but uh, we do understand that. And uh, in my honest opinion, if this neighbor is willing to modify exactly as the next door neighbor, and then we are in a tough spot if, uh, because when you look at from here, the next door has been approved and, but anyway, uh, having said that, uh, ma'am, are you requesting indefinite deferral uh, or uh, um, you want to come back with the proper I drawings come back and with the, Yes, I want to come back with a um, little bit more revised um, plan for this. Okay. You, Mr. Chair, staff, and, uh, considering it's under enforcement, what sort of deferral would you be prepared to support? I can just looking at the system, it appears that the order to comply, the timeline has come and gone. So we're looking at, at simply enforcement running parallel with the committee application. Obviously, it's in the applicant's best interest to bring it forward as quickly as possible. Um, I would hope that within 30 days that they could provide um, modified drawings for whatever reconfiguration they're anticipating. Okay. Chair, staff. So if the it doesn't preclude the applicant working with staff to rectify it, so I would support staff recommendations. Uh, is that a motion you're putting forward, uh, Mr. Nurse? Yeah, now it's. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, uh, just a comment. Uh, uh, I don't think so that will be allowing a scope if we are refusing this application today to come back and uh, modifying because I, I, I feel they still need some variance uh, to go further. Uh, if we uh, defer this application. Well, it However, gives, true chair gives incentive for the applicant to work quickly to get everything in shape. I do agree with you, Mr. Nurse, but at the same time, I think if we put together a timeline that will also give them uh, uh, some time to work uh, a bit quickly. But uh, anyway, 
uh, we have a motion put forward by Mr. Nurse to recommend staff's uh, recommendation. Do we have seconded for this motion? Seconded. Seconded by uh, Mr. Uh, Crouch. All in favor? So this motion is two versus two. Uh, how we are looking into it, uh, Ms. Myers? Through you, Mr. Chair, um, the committee will need to put another motion on the floor until we get a motion that carries. Okay. So, Mr. Crouch, what you suggest? I think uh, we, if we put together a timeline, that will be appropriate. Uh, not too long, but uh, maybe two meetings from now or... Well, it, it's difficult to determine that because the applicant's engineer is going to have to talk with staff. The applicant's engineer is going to have to be acceptable to city staff. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be difficult to do, and if there are changes, then it probably should also be recirculated. Uh, also, uh, because we're discussing it through you to staff, has an application been made to get permission for the um, separate living area downstairs? Second unit downstairs. I'm sorry if I may interrupt, but we can always put together that condition as an unregistered second dwelling unit. But staff can answer that. Yes, that's certainly an, an option if there has been no application. That I don't see any um, application to register a second unit at this location. Um, the order that's been issued is simply for the construction of a blow grade entrance in the side yard. I don't see a corresponding order for the finishing of the basement without a permit although that is possible, but certainly if you were to consider approving it in the future or today, um, you could include as a condition that it not be used to access an unregistered basement apartment. And at the application uh, itself says proposed entrance to be used as a basement apartment entrance. Um, it just leads me to uh, support ner Mr. Nurse's position. I don't think uh, it'll be difficult for me to, to move from that. The applicant uh, hasn't got a building permit for the work done, hasn't applied for a permit to uh, access the secondary unit, uh, and didn't comply with the bylaws. I mean, this is not something that I feel I have to be nice about. I know you're uh, right, Mr. Carl, but at the same time, what I personally feel, if uh, if applicant uh, be given some opportunity as they are willing to work and willing to spend some money and willing to alter their uh, their uh, blow grid entrance uh, going through a proper channel, I think, uh, in my honest opinion, is they should be given uh, an opportunity to work on with limited time. Uh, but however, I respect uh, Mr. Uh, you and uh, Mr. Nurse's uh, views as well. You want to add uh, something? I just want to add something, that that's how the property was bought. This was something that came forward to us recently. Mm -hmm. So we are very willing to kind of do whatever it need, takes to go when by When did you move city. there? Yeah. Uh, my parents had moved, I think, 2000, around that time, 2000 or 2000. It's a 10-year-old house for us, for my parents. So that gives me 2009 or 2010. I don't, I can get you the exact date, I just don't. No, that's fine. Yeah, just, uh, but that, that's how the property was bought originally. Please go ahead. Just a question to staff. If there were modifications made, um, obviously not knowing what those modifications may be, would there be a consideration by staff to approve? So the question really is, is, is this not something that can be approved in any way, shape, or form, or is there the ability to um, make some modifications that staff could support this? Uh, through Mr. Chair, uh, the main, main issue here is the drainage. So if the applicant come back with a solution that is acceptable to the engineering staff and uh, uh, the staff can potentially support this application. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, staff. Uh, uh, would it be true, though, that you supported the secondary unit? Uh, Are we facilitating support of the secondary unit without bridging staff's opportunity to review it? Uh, through Mr. Chair, staff will not support it um, as for the basement to be used as a second unit. There will be a condition imposed um, for the basement not to be used as a second unit, registered as a second unit. To the applicant, knowing that, is it worthwhile making this application? I didn't understand that completely. You don't get a basement apartment. 
uh, I think in the long term that's what they are planning to do is to register the second unit dwelling or at least for your, their own personal use. That was but, one of the issues that came up. Yeah, I was just told that there's been no application to make it a basement um, uh, apartment. That would be the future plan because it, the objection came from the zoning first and then the building is gonna, so we can't get a building permit unless we get approved by the zoning. And this by zoning, this was one of the main reasons. Thank you. And if I may offer just clarification Please on go that. Ahead. We would not accept an application for a side entrance that doesn't comply, so they wouldn't have been able to submit a application to register unless they relocated the principal entrance. Um, I would note that this entrance, if it is approved, would fully comply with the requirements for a 1.2 meter path of travel to that entrance and could, under the provisions for two unit dwellings, be used for the purpose of accessing a second unit, provided that they met all of the other bylaw and building code requirements. Um, if planning staff, however, imposes a restriction on the use, then obviously they couldn't in any way register a secondary unit in this, which would otherwise be permitted by the zoning bylaw. To the applicant, do you understand even if at the later stage your application is being reviewed and uh, committee come to an agreement to support your application, but in that recommendation there will be a clause and, uh, uh, sorry, one of the recommendations would be uh, your, your, your basement, uh, or unregistered basement, you cannot use this entrance for that. Okay. All right? And that is because it's a below grade entrance? It's not about that. Uh, there, there, are, there are some uh, guidelines when uh, anyone go and uh, register uh, their uh, second dwelling unit. So th you need to follow some guidelines on that too. So the main, so so if this application is refused, so the only option that is left is to actually create a new entrance if they're going to use it as a second dwelling entrance. Yes, that, that you can work uh, with the staff if that is the case, maybe through the backyard. But at this point, what I'm uh, uh, looking into it, uh, whether you are willing to spend that much uh, effort and uh, time and money. And uh, I do feel for it, and that's why my position is uh, I am willing to support your death row. Uh, Mr. Iger, uh, Mr. Steiger, would you like to add something? No, I only wanted to ask, yeah, add to um, Mr. Chiao's uh, um, comment regarding, so the engineering issues have, would have to be dealt with, but then also there may have to be modifications to the stair um, in terms of potentially additional steps on it to yeah. the rear and so forth yeah. before yeah, exactly. we would potentially consider something in support in this situation. So there is potential for some support depending on what the applicant comes up with. But they have to address the drainage issue. So, principal. Okay. As far as if we have to look at the circulation, if uh, two committee meetings from now, can we, uh, if I put together a motion, can we work something on it? Through you, Mr. Chair. Um, if we're looking at October 23rd hearing, we would have to have everything before staff no later than September 25th. I don't know if that's going to be achieve achievable yeah. from the client's perspective. Given the time is only uh, 12, 13 days yeah. left. Yeah. What about the meeting after that one? Um, for the November 13th hearing, um, information would have to be provided by October 16th. That's more feasible. So uh, uh, just uh, I'd like to put forward a motion and see how it goes with uh, this application deferred to November 19. Uh, to you, Mr. Chair, that would be November 13th. Sorry, November 13. Uh, my apologies. Uh, this application to defer, I'm putting forward a motion to defer this application to November 13. Sure, sure. Staff, could you please bring your comments? If we have to defer on November 13th. In terms of our ability. 
Pardon? My concern is enforcement. Any deferral won't um, defer any kind of enforcement either for the illegal basement apartment or for the order to comply. The applicant will have to work with staff in both divisions to, to satisfy them if they're looking for any kind of extension. Thank you. Are you a seconding? Uh, are you okay? Sure. So, motion put forward by me for November 13, deferral, seconded by Mr. Crouch. All in favor? So, it's three, two, one. So, this uh, application has been deferred to November 13. You need to work uh, as soon as possible with your engineering uh, consultant yeah. and uh, work with staff as uh, we do understand uh, where you're coming from, but uh, we need to put together everything proper for us uh, by the time November 13, so we can make a decision accordingly. I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thanks. Calling application A18133, 119-5301, Ontario, Inc. Property is located at 195 Canaan Crescent. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, committee members, uh, staff. My name is Elroy Van Grohl. I'm uh, principal of Van Grohl and Associates. Uh, we are the agent for the owners for this uh, variance request. Our, our request is for uh, a variance to increase the allowable tandem parking from 23 spaces to 26 spaces, an increase of, of three parking spots. Uh, the tandem parking requirements were designed in consideration for motor vehicle repair being having a high short-term need for parking cars be, being, <clears throat> excuse me, being serviced. Our design locates these tandem parking spaces along the north property line of the property and as designed does not impact the uh, functionality of the site. Uh, we are also in a site plan approval process with the city at the moment. Uh, we're, we're well into that. Uh, and <clears throat> I also note that our development planner who's here has a, a favorable report uh, with respect to the uh, variance that's before you. We, we believe it's minor, confirms, conforms to the official plan and the intent of the bylaw, and we uh, look forward to a positive vote. Are you in agreement with the staff recommendations? I'm sorry? Are you in agreement with the staff recommend recommendations? Oh, yes, yes, we're in agreement with the staff recommendations. Okay. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Chairman. Many members, any questions for the applicant? No. Is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Uh, this application is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Uh, the extent of the variances be limited to, the sh to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. The vehicle parking shall not occur on public boulevard, uh, landscaped areas, and the pedestrian walkways. The owner finalized the site plan approval under city file SP17-115 execute a uh, site plan agreement and post any required financial securities insurance to the satisfac satisfaction of the director of development services. Failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee <coughs> shall render the approval null and void. Okay, thank you. So if no further business, looking for a motion to proceed. Motion. motion to approve with the conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Mr. Offer. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Calling applications A18134 and A18135, Brampton Treveni Community Center. Property is addressed as 20 Davis Elm Drive. Good morning. Uh, my name is George Papadopoulos. Mm -hmm. I am the uh, project architect as well as the agent for the owners. 
uh, I just like to mention something in brief. Uh, uh, basically, when this build, when this property was being purchased, it was purchased on the basis of uh, to put one building on it, and there was uh, a requirement to do the merging of the two properties. Uh, the owners have hired a, a lawyer, and they found out with the contact with the city of Brampton's legal department that this merging cannot happen uh, in the immediate time, basically because they are of two different plans, uh -huh. subdivision plans. But he recommended that the owner accept a restriction of section 118 which allows this sub, uh, this two build, two, these two properties being built, uh, being constructed on with one building. However, we found out later on during the process of site plan approval that the section 118 is not applicable to zoning. So that's why we're here. Uh, basically, uh, the owner has no intention of building more than one building on it. Mm -hmm. The plans are ready to be constructed if the building permit application is allowed to go through. And uh, as far as these uh, five uh, conditions, uh, some of them may be applicable, some of them may not be. Uh, however, if, if this uh, committee approves the application, I don't have to go through them. But if you do, if, would like to hear my comments on them. I'll be happy to go through them as well. Um, basically, we find out that the city of Brampton development uh, uh, and planning have are in favor of this building. They do find it desirable. And whatever we're providing, we're providing a first class building. <coughs> we have made rendering. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but uh, it's made from stone and uh, quite elaborate with lots of site, site uh, landscaping. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, it does have uh, almost a garden of 30 uh, meters or 30 feet wide in, in the northeast corner, just like a garden, not just, uh, just landscape. Uh, the landscape is throughout. As far as the parking, we were told by the city that the parking should be decided on, on, on the amount of uh, occupant of the uh, prayer hall and the requirement was 98 parking and we provided 106 so we provided more the occupancy the the coverage of the building for the two properties individually or to get or together does not exceed 26 percent which is the if i understand correctly the coverage was uh, approved to be 35 percent so we're way below that uh, as far as uh, the other items, I mean, whatever they are, like they they uh, they cannot be uh, applicable to one building because it's one building. We cannot cut it in half. Sure. Now, during the process of my research on this property, uh -huh. I did find out that during the process of approval of the whole subdivisions, that Rand Engineering was doing the services, and they provided only one access service for the two properties, not one each, one for both, which means the intent was that they want to put one place of worship on this property. So if there is any questions, I'm here. Sure. Uh, just to uh, correct uh, application A18-134 and A18-135, you indicated there are five conditions, but I see only two. We have, we have occupants of 600 worshippers. Uh, so there is a, 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 a format that we were told by the city. Mm -hmm. We went by it. Uh, not sure exactly, but my intern architect will give you the exact details. It came to 98. And we had space to put 106, basically because there is always concern about parking in places of worship. Okay, sure, no problem. Let us uh, go through the procedure and then we'll hear the staff report and then if you have any question, you can always share. Okay? Yes. Please go ahead. So what we're considering today is to permit the one building on two lots. We're not looking at the, the, uh, the 
five paragraphs are not conditions, they are the existing zoning bylaw requirements. That's Can you live with those? Because it's quite easy to support treating it as one lot, but if you want to if you don't want to comply with the zoning bylaws, then we don't have anything in front of us to make a decision. Okay. The, the thing is that for these two properties, uh, we're putting one building on it. It requires the yes, merging. Yes, we understand that. Yes. Uh, it's just that you raise these five conditions, which are not conditions. They're just the zoning bylaw. And what you're saying is, yes, okay, we can, we'll treat it as one property. And then it's up to you to comply with the zoning bylaws. Well, we could make it, if you like, conditional that only for this building that is being in the process. I don't think that's necessary. You won't get a building permit unless it's, uh, you're in compliance. I see. Uh, I, I just think that the, the five conditions for the purpose of this meeting are red herrings. Yes. So if we go with the five conditions, they are not the, the conditions. The condition is possible, like, like the, the only condition the we can approve. Out. The only it's condition we can approve without further circulation um, of where you're placing the building and stuff like that is that uh, we approve that you can register a restriction pursuant to the Land Titles Act to treat these two properties as the same if it's necessary to the satisfaction of the city solicitor. We're not talking about side yard setbacks, landscaping, driveway entrances, nothing like that. We have nothing in front of us with regard to that. Exactly. That's fine. Okay. So anyway, staff will be in position to answer some more, but uh, is there anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? These two applications, I mean, A18134, A18135. Seeing none, staff, could you please bring your comments for these two applications? So these applications are supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. One, a restriction pursuant to section one. 18 of the Land Title Act be registered on title to both blocks, being Block 120, Plan 43M, 1850, and Block 230, Plan uh, 43M, 1983. With the terms of the Section 118 restriction to the satisfaction of the city solicitor, and the failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Thank you. Sir, I hope you understand what we were talking about. Well, I do understand that we have to, the minor variance is for the zoning uh, items. Mm -hmm. And uh, in presenting this fact that we are in the process of uh, accepting the application to bring it toward you is to give us your approval for these items. As Mr. Crouch said, we are not looking any details about your building or setbacks or anything. We are just looking uh, this uh, this variance being proposed in front of us. I understand. Okay. And, and from the staff report, uh, Mr. Papadopoulos, was uh, what we're doing is allowing the two properties to be treated as a single parcel of land in determining the requirement and restrictions of the zoning bylaw. So I think you've got what you want. I just when you raise the five conditions they're not they're just the zoning bylaw i hear you all i was trying to point out i hear you like I, I thought because they are here that i should be talking about them yeah no no problem yeah. that's yeah. okay i mean we did yeah Thank but you. I, I i also hear the second what whatever you're saying is to allow the building the the two property to be considered as one for the and that's all we're yes, doing yeah. and that's what we really require Thank okay, you. so are you in agreement with these two conditions on the, these both applications, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, so if no further discussion, looking for a motion to these both applications. Motion to approve in accordance with the staff recommendations. By Mr. Crouch and seconded by Ms. Doppler. All in favor? So both of these applications has been approved. A18134, A18135. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much, sir. Thank you. Calling application A18136-10254, Huron Ontario Property, Inc., located at 10254 Huron Ontario Street. 
Good morning, committee. My name is Michael Vanny. I'm a planner with Weston Consulting Group. We are the authorized agent for the property owner at 10254 here, Ontario. Um, I'm here today before you to request a minor variance application to permit outside storage on a portion of the lot required for parking, whereas the bylaw does not permit outside storage on any portion of a lot required for parking, loading, driveway, or landscaped open space. The subject property is part of a current site plan application to develop the site for a 1.2 million square foot Canadian Tire Warehouse. Um, the minor variance application before you is simply to permit outside storage to be located in the same area as parking for standard vehicular and employee parking. Um, the outside storage was approved by committee in 2016 in the area identified by the green line. Uh, simply today we are asking that um, as part, as you can imagine, it's a very large warehouse. There is a large parking requirement. As part of our site plan application, there will be a certain portion of spaces that aren't actually going to be provided. They will be what we're calling ghosted spaces that will be provided in the future if ever needed. The purpose of this application would be to allow that to be in the same area where we have previously received approvals for the outside storage of trailers. Um, generally, we have reviewed staff's recommendation report are, and are supportive of their recommendations except for condition one, which it's my understanding staff will be recommending a revision to that condition. Okay. Is there any comment or concern or any question by committee members so far to the applicant? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? Seeing none, staff, could you please bring your comments? Through the chair, thank you. Uh, we support this uh, application subject to the following conditions. And like the applicant said, there is one revision to condition number one, which we are suggesting uh, we agree with the staff, with the applicant. Uh, what has happened is that this, land, this area that is subject to the variance, um, through a site plan, a conference site plan application, the applicant has now realized that instead of 0.58 meter hectares, they would require 0.59 hectares. So it's a minor revision, um, and so we are revising our condition um, to address that. And if I may, I can now read the conditions for you. Please go ahead. Um, that application um, A18-136 is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Uh, number one, that the extent of the variance be generally limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice and having an area not exceeding 0.59 hectares. Um, second is that the proposed use does not occur prior to the approval of the corresponding site plan application, SP 18-058, and the related building permits for the warehouse development. That adequate provisions be made on the subject property for facilitating a direct pedestrian connection between the proposed outside storage area to the main entrance of the proposed warehouse in the event the area is utilized for the required parking, and that such a connection be indicated on the corresponding site plan application to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services. Number four, that the proposed storage area be appropriately screened by measures that include a fence, panel, or fabric on a chain link fence along the north property line, and that such screening shall be indicated on the corresponding site plan application to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services. Number five, that required parking for employees be reinstated on the proposed storage area under consideration through this application, if so identified by and to the satisfaction of the Commissioner of Public Works. And last, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee will render the variance null and void. Thank you. So are you understand and accept these conditions? Yes, we do. Are you in agreement? Yes. Did, did you put another uh, adjective in that first condition so it would be substantially limited to be shown? or um, I, I just heard the same phrasing and that um, would create an ambiguity. Yeah, I, I, we thought it's generally limited to that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That answers my question. Okay, so if, uh, I would, if there's no further discussion, looking for a motion. Motion to approve with the amended conditions. Motion to approve with the amended conditions by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Duffer. All in favor? 
This is approved, sir. Thank you. Application A18137, Tricia and David Cabral. Property is located at 90 Little Britain Crescent. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Committee of the Board, and Secretary Treasurer, and the staff as well. My name is David Cabral. This is my wife, Tricia, and we reside at 90 Little Britain Crescent in Brampton. So it's my understanding that the the committee is um, is okay and is allowing us with the the first three minor variances. Well, we'll talk about that in detail uh, about the staff report. But uh, certainly, you can uh, if you want to add something about your application. Uh, I, we do have your application in front of us, uh, and we are taking five variances. If you wishes to add something further, uh, you're more than welcome. But we have uh, uh, we have your application already in front of us, with all the drawings and stuff. I just wanted to um, to touch on uh, number four and five with uh, in regards to the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, this is a new home that we purchased, and uh, we've been here for almost two years, and. Um, Congratulations. No Thank you. Um, with that being said, um, when we received the home, um, we were quite disappointed with how high they built our home <coughs> and how many steps we needed to enter our home. If you we had the elevation like, is high? The elevation, correct. Okay. So we have the highest house on the whole entire street at eight steps to enter our front That's door. That's good. You can see everyone, what everyone is doing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, but they can also see us. <laughs> um, so the average uh, steps on, on our street for most homes are um, about four, uh -huh. and we're at double that at eight. Um, yeah, I saw that. So that causes an issue with us from day one with, with parking, um, and also having um, a, young, a young boy as well going in and out of the vehicles. Uh -huh. Because of the stairs coming out so far into the driveway, it's made it very difficult for us to get in and out of the vehicle safely with him. Um, the house being high as well, um, we weren't able to get the garage entrance that we were supposed to get and or a side entrance. Mm -hmm. So this is our only way in and out of the home when we leave and come. So the way we, we need to park the vehicles, um, I don't know if you could if we can put this one on sure. the projection. Staff can assist you on that. Thank you. So you can see there, both our vehicles uh, in the driveway. Mm -hmm. We actually need to park the, the first vehicle there uh, as closest to the steps. We need to park it as far forward, almost touching the sidewalk in order to open up the doors to safely yeah. re remove our groceries and um, take our child in and out of the vehicle as well. Um, and this is the reason why we have created the five foot walkway to match the five foot width of the steps next to the driveway. Mm -hmm. um, it was not ever intended and will ever be intended to park a vehicle on, which you technically can't, not even a Mini Cooper can fit in that space. True. Um, so those are the two vehicles that we, we, we own and, and drive, and that's how we will continue to park. Um, so I have, I'm a little bit in disagreement with the um, number four, uh, the driveway being 26 feet, including mm -hmm. that five-foot walkway, because um, it is a walkway. It's not as, yes, it is right next to the driveway, but it's not intended for, for driveway use at all. Um, it was just, it was, um, we put that there basically for us to have a safe in and out of our home and also to safely um, come in and out of the vehicle as, as best as possible and also not to block the sidewalk. Um, <coughs> for number five, um, on the left side, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, on the south side of the driveway, if we, do you mind putting this on the projection? Thank you. Sure. <coughs> so this shows the 16 inches of, of stonework that we've added just past the corner of the garage. Um, mm -hmm. The reason why we needed to do this is because we actually had to shift our vehicles over to the south 
in order to, to stay away from that stepped wall to have space to open up that, those car doors. Um, and then that being, every, shifting everything over, we needed that a little bit extra space. So that space is just basically um, for, for myself with my vehicle, my truck there showing on the south side uh, to safely take my child in and out of my vehicle as well because there was a huge step off in the grass um, and it was very unsafe for me to take them out. So mm -hmm. because of the way the, the property was designed and with those steps in mind, how we have to shift everything over, unfortunately, we needed to have that little bit of extra space in order to safely um, do our, what we need to do on a daily basis, basically. We do understand uh, that part. Uh, the previous slide we put on, uh, the one you supplied, uh, even I can see from here uh, too, but uh, yeah, this is better. Uh, the railing is missing from those stairs. Yes, it's being made. And they're quite like eight, nine steps. Yes, it's being made and the contractor did not put a temporary one. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't want to, uh, with the new stonework that was just installed, he mm -hmm. didn't want to make any temporary holes for okay. the time being, but uh, it is on its way and it's, I believe it's, it's ready to be installed. Okay. And uh, the second is, uh, the good thing is you did not uh, continue with your interlocking on the boulevard portion where your fire hydrant is. So that is the good thing at least. Uh, you just covered where, uh, where it was required for you. So no problem. Further, uh, uh, is there anything else you wishes to add at this point beside your presentation? I think that's it at this time. Okay. Through you, Mr. Chair, to the applicant, would you be prepared to move the concrete and interlocking bricks on the roadside of the sidewalk? Part, sorry, I, on I, the roadside of the sidewalk. Oh. You don't need it for parking and access for your child. Are, are, you, are you talking about the lower boulevard portion? Yes. To lessen the width? Yes, to comply with the bylaw. If I may, through you, Mr. Chair, ahead. the lower portion of the driveway does comply with the bylaw. It doesn't. Oh, it's extend. only the five feet. It's only so. The lower portion of the bylaw of the driveway does not exceed the maximum permitted width. It's only at the top portion between the sidewalk and the home where the hardscape surface has been widened in excess of what would be permitted. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. That's also so, okay. something that I forgot to mention was that we did not. We maintained the 22 feet that we were allowed, so we did not even go over that. Even on the top portion, um, where we ended up on the south side, we're still at 22 feet there. So, um, often when we're dealing with applications like this, we deal with a barrier on the five feet, so you could put in a landscape light fixture or something that would prevent any vehicular access to that. Would you prepared? Would you be prepared to accept that as a condition? Well, we do have a lot of, it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but we do have a very large armor stone, which would kind of prevent any vehicle from even getting close to that area without taking out their front or rear bumper. Well, I can see something there, but it, um, I mean, you drive around on these inspections and there's some strange parking configurations in front yards. Yes, and I That's agree. what we're trying to prevent. And, no, and exactly. you wouldn't want and them happening on the street either. There's a good so majority. Perhaps so that, perhaps that barrier would have to be moved uh, toward the driveway to ensure there's no vehicular access available and that would um, that would be a common sort of resolution to that problem. Yes I understand that but then it also would impede our, our walkway that we've created as well which we want to maintain it as strictly a walkway. Well that's if, why I was suggesting something as uh, low profile as a light standard where you, you've just got one in the corner there and you still have plenty of opportunity on the house side of the vehicle to not be obstructed. Okay. Well, I would, we would be prepared to move, what if we move that armor stone into the walkway um, a bit more? I'd rather that than have a light post at this point. Yeah, that, that, you know, that'll, uh, uh, that sort of thing could be considered. Uh, often, this, often this condition would just be written that there'll be a barrier placed to the satisfaction of a municipal official. Okay. Would to be just work with them to, <coughs> to place it appropriately so a vehicle can't access your five feet. Okay. So we would have to work, 
how well, uh, we are not in that stage yet. Uh, yeah. There is uh, some procedure, but I do agree with uh, Mr. Crouch. But at the same time, my only concern is since this, uh, and I notice even in this picture and during my site visit, the elevation is high. So if somebody is walking uh, from nine or eight or nine steps and coming in the flow and straight hitting into uh, bumping into a okay. big rock right in front of, of the stairs. Uh, that we have to look into it as well. Uh, I'm not uh, saying that uh, somebody has to rush every day, but still uh, potentially something can happen. But again, uh, that's part of never-ending uh, discussion. Uh, is there any other comment or question by the committee members to the applicant at this point? None. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? And staff, could you please weigh in your comments, and then we will come back to you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, staff recommend that application A18-137 is supportable in part, subject to the following conditions being imposed. That variances 4 and 5 be refused, and that the perme permeable landscape strip be reinstated to the required 0 0.6 meters, and that the driveway be reduced to the permitted 6.71 meters. Number 2, that variances 1, 2, and 3 be approved. Number three, that the extent of the variances be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Number four, that building permits shall be obtained for each of the accessory structures as required by the Ontario Building Code within 60 days of the committee's final date of decision. Number five, that the proposed pergolas be of an open style construction. And number six, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of committee shall render the approval null and void. Okay, uh, thank you. Just one question to the staff. Uh, what is the driveways uh, because the recommendation first said uh, reduced to permitted 22 feet what is the existing uh, width as we have right now the, the existing width as shown on the sketch in front of you 26 feet 8 inches yeah a portion of that width extends um, into the two foot required permeable landscape strip. Mm -hmm. So they have maintained um, just over a foot of permeable landscaping between the edge of the paved surface and the lot line. Mm -hmm. um, and the remainder of course is in front of the stairs and that would exceed the 22 feet. So on the permeable landscaping, uh, I know that we need 1.97 feet, but they have uh, 1.18. So it's not that they have went all the way up to the boundary line. And two gentlemen's concern uh, to get out of the vehicle, uh, I think, uh, uh, especially in the winter conditions, rather than jumping into the grass, it's not a bad idea. But uh, again, uh, can make committee members how we would like to see uh, this. Uh, are you willing to modify your uh, uh, area right in front of your stairs because that will that will save everyone some hassle and uh, if you just put as Mr. Crouch mentioned some lamp post or permanent barriers or some uh, landscaping as you put some of those rocks will uh, reduce your driveway width and that will satisfy everyone. Yeah like I mentioned uh, we'd be okay with moving the armor zone into the walkway as much as we don't love that idea. Again, it would hinder the, the walkway itself, but... You don't have to come all the way in. It's just uh, like you will still get a walkway. That's yeah. my understanding. But if you move or put together some new uh, uh, permanent barriers there, so that will satisfy your both of your uh, these uh, uh, recommendations by staff. Okay, yeah, we can, I guess, no? work together on, on exactly where it Sorry, needs to one, be. so because permeable landscape, one will still uh, uh, stay. Correct. The, the placement of permit barriers would only apply to the excess width on the side of the stairs. If the committee is choosing to support the reduction in permeable landscaping, then that variance would have to be approved and not refused as recommended by staff. Um, I would note that that armor stone would generally not be an acceptable barrier. It is a trip hazard mm -hmm. and would likely... Um, you know, violate the property standards bylaw, if nothing else. Usually we're looking for something that's at least two feet high. Sometimes it's a bench, sometimes it's a planter. I did notice a planter in one of those pictures. Um, it doesn't have to be large and imposing in any way, but it does have to prevent a vehicle from swinging over 
onto that area. Um, you mentioned that it does involve the area in front of the steps. It would actually be um, six feet away from the steps so that it does provide a clear path of travel, obviously, to the steps. We're not going to expect a barrier right at the bottom of the stairs. That's uh, actually a good idea. Maybe a bench uh, you guys can consider, and especially six feet from there, so you have clear path to the stairs. And uh, what uh, my opinion is, I am inclined to support your uh, variance number five. Uh, that will allow uh, you to permeable landscape on the south side of your driveway to be uh, approved as is. That's what uh, my opinion. I cannot speak on behalf of the rest of the committee. But uh, if you are in agreement to take care of uh, variance number four, with uh, some suggestions by the staff, and then uh, I am willing to proceed on uh, variance number five, but again, it's up to the rest of the committee. Yeah, no, absolutely, we're okay with uh, doing whatever we need to do for the item four, for the various. Um, is that planter that's in place now, is that something that would be sufficient? Yes, it is. Usually that is something we would expect. It would have to be permanently attached to the driveway. Usually people just bolt them down. Okay. Basically, you know, you need to remove uh, the portion of your uh, uh, landscape in there and install them permanently. Okay. okay, committee members, any other questions or suggestions? Uh, well, I'd, I'd still like to hear from staff with respect to the side yard setback of the uh, driveway, side yard setback variance. You mean the permeable landscape side? Yeah, the permeable um, landscape. So variance number five. Well, the staff's concern in that regard is that it's on the paired side of the driveway, so the, the reduction there is more acute. Uh, we've seen reductions in the past on the permeable side where it's often been adjacent properties had their lawn there and so forth, and there's been some consideration there. Here there isn't. You're just taking it on the, the, the narrowest possible strip. So. Um, the impact is greater. I mean, these are the, the city's permissions for driveways are quite frankly quite generous at the 6.7 yes. meters. You should be able to park two cars and get out of both sides. I mean, in, in a parking lot in a in, in a commercial area, it's the, the width is 2.7 meters. So this is almost a meter greater. Um, so that's staff's concern. I mean, at the very least, if the committee's considering the reduction, at least only do it on the portion that's uh, beyond the sidewalk and not the, the portion of the boulevard. So that the portion of the boulevard at least has some of the grass left. So. Thank you for your comments. I, um, I share staff's concern with respect to drainage in the side yard setback. Mm -hmm. So uh, the question to Mr. Steiger, when you said uh, the boulevard portion can stay, so you mean uh, uh, between house, uh, uh, brick wall, and uh, and uh, and the sidewalk can need to be removed, and uh, the remaining portion can stay. The boulevard portion can stay. To the chair, so the staff is not supporting the reduction period. But if the committee is considering support uh, based on what the the justification is from the applicant in terms of the ease of getting out of the vehicle, then the portion that's in the boulevard is not really required to serve that purpose. So. The request would be that at I least that be reinstated there to its full width. So. Okay. Which would probably just then result in the removal of the of the concrete portion, and the, I think the pavers could probably remain. I think. So. so it's just merely a <laughs> suggestion. So, so uh, do you understand what Mr. Steiger just mentioned? I sir? think so. It's a little bit difficult. The volume's a little bit low, but I think I got. I think I understood. To to basically to to lessen the width on the boulevard portion. Yeah. So just to maintain the two foot um, um, drainage area, I guess. So you, according to, uh, to your submissions, you said you are required this uh, uh, permeable landscape side, uh, the south side of your driveway to get out of your vehicle. But uh, as uh, uh, Mr. Steiger mentioned, that you don't need uh, uh, anything down uh, between road and uh, your sidewalk yes. portion. So, if uh, are correct. you willing to reinstate that one? 
um, it would be a tough hit because it would take away from the aesthetics with breaking up the lines. Um, but if we really need to, then I guess we would have to adjust that. Mm -hmm. Well, it's aesthetics against drainage, and drainage is very important too. Okay. So if uh, that is the case, if we are willing to move into that side, how we can modify these um, two uh, conditions? If we can have some clarity from staff. Yes, I'd, I'd be prepared to uh, accept the side yard setback variance to the house side of the sidewalk. And the variance on the width of the driveway, um, provided there is a barrier to parking to somebody's satisfaction. I think, uh, Mr. Crouch, if we are just completely refusing uh, and we are in agreement with staff's position on variance number four, uh, I think that will uh, that will be the only option for the applicant to put together some uh, permanent barriers. The only thing we need to modify is uh, uh, variance number five. That's my understanding, unless staff, staff thinks uh, differently. I'm sorry, through you, Mr. No Chair. Problem. Could you please no repeat, <laughs> repeat your understanding? Uh, what we were working on together is um, if, as I understand it, yeah. your Mr. Crouch's motion is to allow for a slight reduction in the required permeable landscape strip between mm -hmm. the sidewalk and the house yep uh, on condition that the remainder sidewalk and the house or sidewalk and the road that, sidewalk and the house so yeah so that's where you're allowing the variance yeah. on condition that the landscape strip between the sidewalk and the curb be reinstated yeah and that you're refusing the variance for the overall width of the driveway mm -hmm. and requiring that a permanent barrier be, pla be placed at the 22 feet mark to meet the bylaw requirements for maximum width. Yeah. Is that uh, something we are uh, proposing, Mr. Froach? Uh, that's something I'm prepared to move if there's a seconder. So we have a motion. Uh, do you understand? these proposed changes? Um, yeah, just to move the boulevard back to where it should be. Mm -hmm. So before we go into the motions, uh, I, I know I ask if anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application, but uh, I do not recall if we give the staff opportunity to read all this, did it? Uh, my apologies. So anyway, we have a, a motion put forward by Mr. Crouch uh, and the seconded by uh, Ms. Stoffler. Do you understand, sir, what is the exact motion? So yes. we are refusing uh, variance number four and uh, amending variance number five. So you need to reinstate uh, any portion between curb and, and the sidewalk. Okay? Yes. So motion by Mr. Crouch, seconded by Ms. Stoffler. All in favor? So this is approved. Thank, Thank you very much for your time and consideration. And sir, yeah, just for the record, you have the supporting letter from 92 Little Britain and number 88. Correct. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Calling application A18138, Rice Construction, Delafield Properties and Luce Holdings. Property is located at 190 Bovaire Drive West. Morning. Morning, Mr. Chairman, committee members, staff. I'm from Landstar Equipment and Leasing. And my name is Dio Narayan. I'm just proposing to continue what I've had for the last few years, to continue with the same business for the next five years that was pre previously granted by the committee. Okay. Any question so far to the applicant? None? Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None staff, could you please win your comments? 
you, Mr. Chair. Staff recommend that application A18-075, or sorry, dash 138 is supportable subject to the following conditions being imposed. Number one, that, variant, that the variance be approved for a temporary period of five years. Number two, that the motor vehicle sales shop be operated only in conjunction with the permitted motor vehicle repair shop. Number three, that the use only be allowed to operate in Unit 18. Number four, that there be no more than eight vehicles for display outside of the unit. And number five, that the failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of committee will render the approval non binding Sir, do you understand and accept these conditions? Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so there's no further discussion. Looking forward to a motion to move. Motion to approve the application with conditions by Mr. Nurse, seconded by Ms. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Calling application A18114-241103, Ontario, Inc., and the property is located at 22 Bram Steel Road. Good morning again, members of committee. My name is Richard Domes, Ganyan Walker Domes, LTD. We are the planning consultant agent for 2411038, Ontario, Inc., who is the recent owner of the property located at 22 Bram Steel Road. Let me ask Ms. Corzola if she can just throw this on the slide for me. The uh, subject site is a one-acre property that features an existing building of approximately 10,000 square feet. The property is outlined on the overhead in red. Uh, the property is located on the north side of Bram Steel Road, just east of, east of Rutherford Road South. As you can see, the community can see through the air photo, uh, the site is located in an industrial area that is strongly characterized by a large presence of motor vehicle oriented uses, including repair, service, body shops, and including motor vehicle sales. My clients are proposing to utilize the building for primary use representing 51% for motor vehicle repair, uh, which is permitted. A secondary indoor motor vehicle sales establishment is, uh, is also being proposed that represents less than 50% of the building. That will provide a supporting role to the motor vehicle repair use. The idea is in part in that the, uh, my clients would bring cars to be repaired onto the site, repair them, and then offer them for sale. In addition, with the new proposal, uh, the repair use and body shop will be opened up to the general public for general service to anybody not interested in buying a vehicle as well. All this will happen in the existing building, including the display of motor vehicles. Uh, the committee may recall that the application was deferred to address comments from the city's planning staff with, with, with respect to the size of the motor vehicle sales establishment, previously 80% of the building. With the revised proposal in front of the committee today, that, uh, that uh, floor space has been considerably altered to decrease the motor vehicle sales establishment to less than 50% and again in a supporting role. Uh, with the revised application, the, the staff concerns with respect to the area, the sales area, should no longer be at issue. And I'd like to point out for committee that the staff report, the new staff report on page two, indicates that sales would operate in conjunction with the repairs, in brackets less than 50%, be limited in scale, limited to the building interior, and subject to, the, and subject to these parameters, in their opinion, meets the OP. The report goes on to also speak to how limiting the interior showroom to 280 square meters and not permitting outdoor sales or display mitigates adverse impact. Staff are recommending approval of the application with conditions. My clients are supportable of the general direction, uh, direction from uh, staff for the approval and can accept most of the conditions with the exception condition number two, which restricts the amount of vehicle sales in the indoor showroom to a maximum of five vehicles. My client is, just to clarify, willing to accept the restriction on the indoor sales area, just not the amount of vehicles to be displayed. It is our opinion that the staff's condition has taken an arbitrary approach to the limiting the number of cars for sale. No study or rationale has been prepared or provided to us that suggests that five cars is appropriate, um, rather than an alternative such as 1015 or no requirement at all. It is our opinion that staff's objectives to 
uh, ensure that the repair use continues to be the primary use has been satisfied by effectively limiting the square area, the, the square footage of the motor vehicle sales establishment within the existing building and also limiting the display of motor vehicles for sale within the building itself. There's no outdoors display of vehicles being proposed. Through these restrictions suggested by staff, there's a finite number of vehicles that can possibly be displayed for sale. Um, but in our opinion, certainly restricting a 3,000 square foot showroom to five cars um, is, is inefficient and, not a, uh, and a, not a proper use of the existing building resource. So our request to the committee today is that um, you approve the, uh, the application with the conditions suggested by staff with the expect, exception of condition number two, mm -hmm. which suggests that only five mule motor vehicles be displayed. Sure, we will come to that uh, when the staff turners will come. But it's good that you're bringing uh, at this point, Mr. Dome. Otherwise, it's hard to monitor how many cars being displayed inside. But uh, that's very nice of uh, your client that they are bringing this uh, at this point. Uh, that's what my opinion at this point, actually. Thank you. Uh, there, is there any number uh, your client will be willing to uh, propose instead of five vehicles? Uh, my client suggests that they can fit with uh, about 18 vehicles in, in the indoor showroom. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would say that in between 15 uh, and 18 vehicles would be acceptable with them to allow jockeying of vehicles. That uh, number they're willing to accept. Okay, we will come to that uh, when the staff's turn will come. So we'll discuss that part. Uh, committee members, any questions so far to the agent? You've addressed mine, thank you. Thank you. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please weigh in your comments? Uh, staff have reviewed the revised proposal and um, are recommending that application A18114 is, suppo is supportable, subject to the following conditions being imposed. Number one, that the motor vehicle sales use only be permitted in conjunction with a motor vehicle repair facility. Two, that the indoor motor vehicle showroom be limited to 280 square meters with a maximum of five vehicles on display and for sale. Three, that all motor vehicle sales occur within the building and there be no outside display of vehicles. Four, that the extent of variance four be limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice. Five, that the approval be granted for a temporary period of five years from the date of committee's decision. And six, that failure to meet the conditions of the committee shall, um, sorry, I should say to maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the decision null and void. Thank you. Okay, back to what we were talking uh, about, uh, Mr. Whiskey, uh, about, recall, uh, about uh, recommendation number two. So what we can look, uh, what staff's position as applicant suggested, because they, it's a bigger building structure and uh, they're looking for more uh, vehicle to be displayed. What we can do into that? Where these five vehicle come from, could you please? Uh, typically in industrial areas, we like to limit the amount of cars just to ensure that the um, sales are secondary to the unit. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the number is slightly arbitrary in terms of the number that we've proposed. Mm -hmm. So if the applicant has a better idea of the number of uh, cars that would be for sale within the building, a mm -hmm. committee can consider that. Mm -hmm. And staff would like to maintain that the showroom be limited to the 280 square meters as recommended in condition number two. Okay. Uh, my take on this is uh, if uh, the business is coming and uh, they want to run their operation, so uh, there has to be uh, some sort of comfort as they are proposing uh, quite a big uh, investment. Uh, and at the same time, uh, this is not a permanent uh, approval anyway. It's a five-year temporary period. So it's good uh, that uh, staff is uh, willing to work on the numbers. So back to you, Mr. Dones, uh, what are your thoughts on that, what we can do on a mutually understanding so everyone comfortable here moving forward? Yeah, I think that if the committee was more comfortable putting a number in, in the condition other than five, I think that we'd be willing to uh, accept about 15 or 18, depending on committee's uh, views. Okay. 15 cars can be fit on 280 square meter. Like, is there any, any pile? I just want to double check with the staff. I don't want to... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we would have to see a configuration, but given uh, that the sales, 
vehicles offered for sale are generally squeezed in tightly with no requirements for um, you know drive aisles it would be up to uh -huh. the applicant to ensure that they can maneuver the vehicles through the building okay so as i said earlier it's nice that uh, they are bringing it now rather than just parking it so i am uh, comfortable with the 15 vehicle on display for sale uh, but committee members can certainly uh, look into it and they can weigh in their comments. What's, what are your thoughts? Because Well, I feel, I feel as uh, Mr. Becky indicated, that as long as it's within the 280 square meters, staff doesn't care, and I don't see any reason to not just uh, mm -hmm. limit it to the 200 squ square meters without a number attached to it. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. That would be acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, Mr. Crouch has a valid point. So let's not uh, limit the uh, number of vehicles, but uh, we can always limit 280 square meter uh, area. Sure, I agree with uh, Mr. Crouch's uh, proposition. Uh, but uh, the uh, capacity uh, drive the number of exactly. Vehicles. No, that's a that's a good idea. If uh, it's hard to move the vehicle within the shop, then how they can display? So. That's uh, completely understandable. So I think uh, what we can uh, do, uh, we need to amend recommendation number second. So the indoor winter or motor vehicle showroom to be limited to 280 square meter uh, meters. So it should read uh, up to meters, I believe. Uh, that would be correct. You would just maintain the condition up to the word meters. Okay. So if no, uh, and sorry, Mr. Steiger, please go ahead. Thanks for your indulgence, Chair. Um, with regard to variance or condition number five, I just noticed um, the, it should be worded the, that the approval for the motor vehicle sales be granted for a temporary period of five years. The rest of the variances, um, I believe we can support those on a, on a permanent basis. Oh, I, that's, oh yeah, that's a nice catch, uh, Mr. Steiger. Apologies for not catching that. No problem. So, um, rest of the variances so are permanent. Condi condition one would be changed only to, uh, to correct the typo in conjunction. Uh, condition two be changed to just end at the word meters. Uh, condition three unchanged. Condition four just fix the typo in variance. Condition five that the approval for motor vehicle sales be granted for a temporary period. And six the failure to maintain the conditions. Those would be all the amendments. Okay. I'd move in favor of that. Okay. Good. Uh, yeah, would I uh, would uh, would committee just uh, indulge me in repeating the the changes to number one and four? One, there's a typographical error in the uh, in the spelling of conjunction. Okay. <laughs> and in four, there's a spelling error in the word variance. Okay. And uh, then number five is uh, to limit on motor vehicle sales, as the rest of the variances are permanent. Yeah, no, I would pre I appreciate the amendment to number five, and I'm willing okay. to accept all the conditions as revised. So motion has, has been uh, put forward by Mr. Crouch uh, with the amended recommendations, seconded by Ms. Doffler. All in favor? This is approved. Thank you. Application A18123, Light Beam Project Limited Partnership, located at the northeast corner of Heritage Road and Steeles Avenue West. Just uh, one quick uh, thing. Committee members are discussing about uh, maybe a proposed recess for a quick five minutes, or we have two applications. We can. This is our final application. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Please.
Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, city staff. My name is Mark Denardis. I'm a planning Hi. associate from Daniel Walker Domes Urban Planners. We act as authorized agent of the owner of the property located at uh, the northeast corner of Heritage Road and Steel Avenue West, Light Beam Project Limited Partnership. I'm accompanied here today by Michael Gagnon, who is the managing principal planner of GWD Urban Planners, Leslie Marlowe, who is the president of Berkshire Access Development, as the parent company of, of the uh, retained uh, registered owner, and uh, Domenica DeSantis, who's a project manager from Berkshire Access Development, and Giovanni Tassone, who is the principal of Giovanni Tassone Architects, uh, the architect of the file. So it is proposed that the property be developed for a multi-unit industrial complex, otherwise known as a industrial mall. A minor variance application was filed on July 24th, 2018. It was first heard and indefinitely deferred at the August 21st hearing. Uh, we've been working with staff for the last couple of weeks and um, we've advanced a revised set of architectural and landscape plans and uh, we were able to get the item back onto today's hearing to be considered. Um, a total of six variances are required, three of which have to deal with reduced landscaped open space areas, one with a reduced setback for a hydro transformer, one that deals with a retaining wall within a landscaped open space area, and the last one, uh, visibility of loading spaces from public street. The uh, variances have been slightly modified since the August 21st hearing to refla reflect the latest architectural plans. Staff have reviewed these and again we've been working diligently with them over the last couple of weeks so um, they're comfortable with the, the revised plan that's being considered today. Uh, we've, had, we've had an opportunity to review the staff recommendation report and we find the conditions generally acceptable. Uh, we, ha we do however have some concerns with conditions five, six, and seven, and we would like to have them modified. Uh, conditions six and seven deal with the limiting of parking spaces uh, along Steeles and Heritage Road. Um, the current plan proposes a total of 185 parking spaces. The zoning bylaw requires a total of 168, so we have a surplus of 20 spaces. Um, that may seem like a lot, but uh, in these type of malls, uh, as the buildings take on occupancy, that surplus parking gets eaten up really quickly. And so therefore, uh, every space is valuable and we just don't see the merit in losing two spaces to gain a total of 30 square meters of landscape, uh, which equates to about 300 square feet. Um, we would like to see the conditions modify to state um, 74 spaces uh, along Steeles Avenue West and 35 spaces on Heritage Road. Condition number five um, deals with the uh, permission to include a retaining wall along Steeles Avenue West open space area. Right now the condition as it's worded um, permits a retaining wall in the southeast corner and I'm going to pop something up on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, the retaining wall is, is, is generally defined as a wall that retains soil. Um, so while the southeast corner we have an arbor stone proposed at the southwest corner of the property along Steeles Avenue West. And what that tall wall looks like is this guy right here. Hopefully you can see that this is a cross section of that concrete tall wall. Uh, our engineer has more or less to said it's a glorified curb. Um, a standard curb measures about, I think, 1,500 millimeters at the top. Uh, this concrete tow wall uh, has a width of 300 millimeters, so it's a difference of six inches. Um, what he's told me is that while he could remove that tow wall, he would have to modify the grades. And when you're doing engineering of grades, uh, you try to get the surface as flat as possible. Right now it's about 1.4%. If he removes that tow wall, he would have to increase the grades to make it work. 
uh, to about 5% or 5.5. Uh, so we are sacrificing good engineering for no real reason here. Um, our preference would be to remain, keep that tow wall. Uh, and back to my earlier statement, we'd like to see the condition revised to also include a retaining wall at the southwest corner along Steeles. So in summary, um, that is uh, our, our presentation and uh, happy to answer any questions that committee members may have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a letter for sharing their concerns by Orlando Corporation dated September 4, 2018. And uh, committee members, any question or concern, uh, anything so far to the applicant? Not so far. Okay. Anyone in the audience wishes to speak on this application? None. Staff, could you please bring your comments? Staff are generally in support of this application. Um, I can, I'll read through the, the, the conditions. They're quite lengthy, but uh, uh, I guess they have to be read. Uh, number one, that variance two, to permit a minimum landscape open space, space strip of three meters of Budding Heritage Road be limited to the areas generally identified on the public notice sketch attached uh, dated August 31st, 2018, that a minimum landscape open space strip of 4.5 meters be provided a budding heritage road in accordance with the sketch attached to the public notice for an area that extends a minimum of five meters wider than the distance between the exposed loading area on both the north and the south side of the landscape strip. Number two, that variance three to permit a minimum landscape open space strip of two meters. And there's a correction there. It should be 6.56 feet. A budding light beam terrace be refused. Number three, that a minimum landscape open space strip of 2.5 meters be provided a budding light beam terrace. Number four, with respect to variance five, to permit loading facilities to be visible from the public street, that the loading facilities may only be visible from light beam terrace. Number five, with respect to variance six, to permit a retaining wall within the required landscape open space area, that a retaining wall only be permitted within the northerly and easterly property lines where such do not uh, abut a public right of way. A retaining wall may be used along Steeles Avenue West as generally identified per the public notice sketch August 31st, 2018, and in the area identified as Armorstone Wall. Number six, that a maximum of 73 parking spaces be permitted along Steeles Avenue West. Number seven, that a maximum of 34 parking spaces be permitted along Heritage Road. Number eight, that the landscape plan for SP 17106 includes significant plantings and landscape elements fencing, signage, and hard elements of superior quality within landscape open space strips to the satisfaction of the Director of Environmental Engineering, that this shall include dense planting and potential landscape elements along Heritage Road that are to screen views to the loading area from the public street. Number nine, that an upscale level of urban design be applied to the architectural elevations in conjunction with the site plan application SP 17109 to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services. Number 10, that the extent of the variances be generally limited to that shown on the sketch attached to the public notice dated August 31st, 2018, as otherwise not restricted by the other conditions in this application. Number 11, that the owner finalize site plan approval under SP 1710600, execute a site plan agreement, and post any required financial securities and insurance to the satisfaction of the Director of Development Services. And finally, number 12, that failure to comply with and maintain the conditions of the committee shall render the approval null and void. Now, to um, address the comments raised by the consultant, um, number uh, uh, condition six and condition seven, um, parking spaces, uh, number 70, uh, 73 parking spaces along Steeles Avenue West and 34, 34 parking spaces along Heritage Road. Uh, to address number seven, uh, the site plan itself uh, that was attached to the public notice includes 34 parking spaces. So we're just trying to identify exactly what's on the public notice. 73 parking spaces, that is actually one uh, less parking space than what's identified on the, part on the, um, on the public notice. However, uh, in conversations that we had prior to this uh, public notice being provided, it was uh, identified that they would be removing uh, two parking spaces. They only removed one parking space as per that conversation. 
And uh, so staff are just trying to maintain what was discussed as part of our conversation, as part of our discussions prior to that. So that 70, that 73 parking spaces reflects what was agreed to before uh, the public notice was provided to us. So that's why we're suggesting the 73 parking spaces. With respect to the retaining wall, um, staff uh, were, uh, have reduced uh, or are amendable to the uh, uh, request to reduce the, um, the landscape strip along Steeles Avenue from six meters down to three meters. Mm -hmm. That was uh, um, in conjunction with uh, providing a significant amount of landscape buffers in that area. So uh, uh, staff are hard uh, on the uh, three meter buffer, uh, three meter open space strip to be maintained as a three meter with no um, uh, retaining wall in that area. Whether it's 0 0.1 of a meter, 0 0.3 of a meter, 0 0.001 of a meter, we have to maintain that. We have to maintain that three meters. That's already a significant reduction. Mm -hmm. um, and then, in addition to that, staff uh, took it upon themselves uh, and noticed that there was an armor stone uh, retaining wall uh, within the uh, within the buffer area along Steeles Avenue. Uh, we recognized that, and in speaking with landscape staff. Uh, they were amendable to uh, allowing for a small portion of the um, landscape open straight landscape open strip space uh, to uh, permit it in that small area. Um, staff do not agree that uh, it would be minor to allow for any other area along Steeles or Heritage Road to allow a retaining wall in that area. Thank you very much. Thank you. The reduction from a six meter uh, landscape area to a three meter landscape area doesn't seem very minor to me. And uh, that six meter setback applies to a very large industrial subdivision that's supposed to be a prestige industrial subdivision. Now, why the capitulation? Uh, oh, um, uh, in reviewing this application uh, for the area along Steeles Avenue, it was um, in discussions with the applicant and with uh, senior staff, it was understood that the industrial site, the, the depth of it um, was very constrained um, in order to permit the uh, industrial uh, site plan to go forward. So the, the, the depth along um, Steeles Avenue is, uh, is very constrained. Um, in fact, they're uh, providing a uh, significant retaining wall along the northerly portion of the site as well in order to accommodate this, this site to go forward. So uh, staff um, were of the opinion that the, uh, the intent of the landscape open space strip along Steeles Avenue could be um, could be maintained uh, along Steeles Avenue. Uh, there's this, the uh, the landscape open space strip along Heritage Road. Uh, initially, it came in uh, for a three meter wide strip um, along Heritage Road. Uh, staff had had significant concerns that the um, the loading area could not be screened with the three meters that was being initially proposed. Uh, in discussions with the applicant um, and with our landscape uh, landscape open space staff, um, we came to the uh, conclusion uh, that the 4.5 meter landscape strip uh, along uh, could uh, accommodate the uh, screening that uh, would provide the prestige character that we would be looking for along Heritage Road. Uh, that's why also staff have rec recommended conditions eight and nine in order to ensure that the landscape uh, landscaping elements and the um, urban design elements are of an upscale character and that the landscaping uh, uh, is of a superior quality. Um, superior quality means of the highest level that uh, landscape staff can uh, request of an applicant. 
you haven't requested that level in the three meter strip along Steeles Avenue. Is there a reason for that? Uh, sorry, that that, uh, that the, the significant plantings is uh, applied to the entirety of th sorry through the chair that that uh, uh, that requirement is for the entirety of the the site plan. So that includes uh, all landscape strip areas and uh, the landscape plan itself. Okay. Uh, thank you. And, and through the chair, is that not affecting a rezoning for the entire subdivision? Um, how, how would you how would you support a six meter setback on other applications, um, even if the property was wide open and they could put the million point three square foot they might want to put on that particular site? Um, through the chair to Member Coach, uh, each site is looked at independently. Uh, I cannot comment on uh, other applications that may come forward uh, for other areas. For this particular application, we realized the constraints of the site due to the depth of the um, of the site and what the uh, the application before us. Um, and we believe that the uh, 4.5 meter wide strip can accommodate it. Uh, uh, can accommodate the uh, landscape strip uh, in this particular case. Um, I wouldn't want to say that this uh, landscape open space uh, can be uh, replicated on every other site, um, but in this particular case, for this particular site, uh, staff uh, are recommending uh, that it can be reduced. Uh, it should also be noted that um, we will be working uh, intensively with the applicant uh, for the landscape uh, you know, landscape bump outs into the into the uh, uh, parking areas and again that's why we've recommended the reduction uh, from uh, their requested 74 parking spaces uh, to 73 parking spaces thank you You're through you, mr. chair just want to add uh, for Go ahead. clarity purposes I think there was a references to uh, building setback reductions we're not seeking any reductions on building setbacks we're only seeking reductions on the open space uh, widths on heritage steels and light beam in the case of light beam it's only about a half a meter on steels save and accept the three meter uh, width sections um, we achieved the or we're actually above the six meter uh, wide requirement uh, there's the island in the middle in the middle of the frontage on steels and we satisfy the open space with at the daylight triangles on heritage road uh, probably about 75 percent of that landscape open space area is 4.5 meters wide uh, whereas the requirement is six and then um, the areas between the access points and the daylight triangle uh, is about three meters wide um, so it, it's only three meters in select areas so I just want to clarify that. Uh, and one other item with respect to the letter filed by Orlando, uh, our client has been in contact with Orlando Corporation and uh, they're satisfied with the revised plans and they have no further concerns. They were satisfied with your previous plans. They just wanted three meter setbacks on their properties. Yeah. Through you, Mr. That's Chair. Why, that's <laughs> why I'm raising this point. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, their letter uh, was neither opposed or in support. They took a yeah. neutral position. So, yeah. but they want uh, uniformity for all the properties. That's what uh, their concerns. When they file their applications. They can uh, they can bring that to your to the committee. <laughs> Obviously, I mean their sites are far larger than ours. This is a smaller uh, block that uh, is limited in depth. So. Um, you know, part of the challenge is there's a lot of variables here. There's landscaping, there's parking, there's optimal unit widths, there's loading facility requirements for truck turning movements. Um, so there's a lot of different variables that we have to balance out when kind of bringing these projects forward. I can see quite lengthy uh, work and uh, staff has done a good job as well. So any other question by committee members? Uh, to the applicant or to the staff. Anything else you wishes to add? Through you, Mr. Chair, I guess we're okay with letting go of conditions six and seven dealing with the parking. I believe uh, Mr. Dykstra was correct that uh, there was a counting error on heritage uh, and it does reflect 34 on the plan. Mm -hmm. So we're okay with that. And number six, we're, we're willing to let it go, uh, 73 versus 74. Uh, number five is still somewhat of a, 
a contentious one. Um, you know, again, I go back to my earlier statement, we're sacrificing good engineering for six inches of concrete. I mean, we're, we're, there are staff are already supporting an armor stone wall at the um, southwest corner. This concrete wall uh, curb is internal to the site, uh, likely not to be visible, and it only measures about 0.5 meters in height. So if we remove it, we're going to have to grade it to about 5%, which is, uh, well, it poses more of a liability for injury. Sorry. Point, I, I think the a clarification should be that the retaining wall, we're not saying that a retaining wall should not be permitted. We're saying that the retaining wall within the required landscape open space area not be permitted. So we just want to retain, we want to maintain that three meters. Mm -hmm. uh, if, they want to, if they want to uh, provide a retaining wall beyond the three meters, we have no objection to that. I think that would give you more clarity on that. It says it's not, in the, it's not there at all. So, Mr. Steiger, you wish to add something, or that was your... No, well, the, the concern, what staff's trying to do is, given the reduction down to three meters, maintain as much of that and not have it be impacted by retaining walls. If the applicant wishes to see that other one that was previously shown in there, the tow wall or whatever it is, then perhaps we reduce by one more stall the number of parking spaces all along. Steels Avenue, so it's down to 72. They're in excess, so that would then gain back some of the potential landscape area lost by that. Uh, it doesn't work. Well, we can yep. we can defer the item and no, negotiate no, no, the no, site no. plan elements elsewhere, um, or we'll, 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 we'll agree to have the retaining wall outside the three meter landscape. Could you, if you want to add something, I would request three, you, three, Mr. Chair. Uh, what my client is is telling me is. We will explore doing the, the toll wall outside of the landscaped open space area. And um, it's implied, I imagine, through the condition that we're allowed to do it outside of the open space area. Correct? Correct. As long as it's not within the required landscape, that three meter strip, then it would be permitted elsewhere. We're okay with that. All good? No further discussion. Looking for the motion to proceed. Motion to approve the application with the existing staff conditions by Mr. Nurse, seconded by Ms. Toffler. All in favor? It's approved. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, just confirming is Mr. Crouch dissenting? I'm dissenting, yes. Okay, so 3 2 1 is approved. Thank you very much. With no further business. I would like to see a motion to adjourn. Motion, motion. to adjourn by Mr. Crouch, seconded by myself because no one willing to do. All in favor? This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>